Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the May 5th meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. This meeting is being held virtually via Zoom video conference. Please be patient. We'll do our best to be efficient and allow everyone to participate equitably. This meeting is also being broadcast and streamed online by FCTV in real time. As this meeting is being recorded by Zoom and broadcast by FCTV, please be cognizant of what you say, how you say it, and what can be seen and heard in your background. The chair recognizes the attendance and always the assistance of our staff members, Jen, Kevin, Alyssa, Mark, Amy, and Susan. We also welcome our Board of Select and Liaison, Sam Patterson. The chair recognizes the full attendance of all commissioners. Thank you, everyone. I'd like to remind the commissioners after commenting, I'll call on each of you at the appropriate time. Let's try not to speak over each other. Also that all votes need to be done by roll call. When I call your name, please state your name and your vote. And it may be redundant, but that's true even if you made the motion or the second. To our public participants, there will be an opportunity for public comment for each hearing. If you'd like to comment on a particular hearing, you may submit any comments or questions via the chat function once that hearing has been opened. At the appropriate time, I will call for public comments and any submissions will be read into the record. The link and further instructions are posted on the agenda. First up is the vote minutes for April 28th. Anyone? Was it here? I move that we accept the minutes as amended and I did make an amendment and forwarded it to Susan. All right. Second that. I have a comment. Uh, right. In the last motion to close the meeting, I was the motion maker. Oh, that was the one that had Jen, right? Uh, well, Betsy was oh. encouraging me uh, to close the meeting with a motion. All right. Anything else? All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the minutes as amended. Betsy? Well, I felt her eye. Courtney? You're so shy Heard. most of the time. Heard eye. Matthew's eye. Kevin? O'Brien eye. Maury? I was not here. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Pat? Harris eye. Peter? Walsh eye. Steve? Pat and I. All right. We have accepted the minutes as amended. Next up is a request for a continuance under a notice of intent. Laurel, Laurel A. Gormley, trustee, L.A. Gormley Revocable Trust, care of Jim Kinkhead, 42 Cape Carter Road, Falmouth, Mass., for permission to remove an existing deck, pergola, and steps to construct a new screen porch and steps to install a new drywall and to install mitigation plantings. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until May 19th. May 19th. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay, I need the motion and a second with a name, please. Uh, Bird, second. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this until 519. Betsy? What well, filter aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Patton, aye. That is unanimous. We have continued this hearing until 519. Next up is a request for a continuance under an enforcement order. David J. Preston and Jane H. Preston, 50 Weatherglass Lane, East Falmouth, Mass. Unpermitted installation of fill within conservation jurisdiction. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, the property owner would like to request a continuance until May uh, 26th. So moved, Gladfelter. Bird, second. 
Um, and I have a question as to the reason for the. I was just able to speak with the property owner's attorney the other day and sent him the materials and, you know, agreed that to give them some time to be able to, to look at that. And, okay. and this one is, you know, has a little bit of a history and I felt it would be better for me to be here and not put it on the 19th. Fair enough. No problem. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion and a second to continue this enforcement hearing until 526. Betsy. Gladfelder, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Arlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Sarah, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat, and aye. It is unanimous. We have continued this hearing until 526. <laughs> Next up are requests for determination of applicability. First up, Mary Beth Knox, 9 Dartmouth Avenue, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to raise RAZE, the existing single family dwelling and shed, and to construct and maintain a new single family dwelling. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard so moved. Sarah, second. Um, I have a question. Yep. Uh, is this a floodplain issue? Is that why it's? Um, Correct. You're going to see two more of them as well, Courtney. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Gladfelder, well, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Hello, Hawks, aye. Pat. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. As unanimous, we have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Stephen and Elizabeth Kramer, 8 Hawthorne Court, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to remove an existing deck and addition and to construct a new two story addition. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. There is second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions, comments? All right. Betsy? I told her aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Patton, aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Christopher and Erica Devon, 178 Crystal Springs Avenue, North Falmouth, Mass., for permission to replace an existing deck with new support structure and decking. Mr. Newton? Mr. Chairman, the applicant's requesting a continuance until May 19th. So move. Second, Gladfelter. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this to 519. And Jen, I'd caution you guys, that we're not getting too uh, overwhelmed on the 19th. Uh, no. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Betsy? Gladfelter, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat, aye. It is unanimous. We have continued this until 519. Mr. Chairman, you have, for the 19th, you have a bunch of RDAs, three new notices, and you'll have two continued notices. So. All right, next up, under request for determination of applicability, Jonathan and Pia O'Reilly, 14 Montgomery Avenue, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to raise R-A-Z-E, the existing single family dwelling, and to construct a new single family dwelling, garage, and to install a new Title V septic system with all associated clearing, grading, and landscaping. Mr. Newton. 
Mr. Tram instead recommends a negative two both under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Vlad Pelter, second. And I'll ask the obvious question. This is floodplain. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good. We're getting him conditioned. <laughs> well, yeah. Betsy. Vlad Pelter, I. Courtney. Bird, I. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Maury. Paula Hawks, I. Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Paul, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Sometimes these things are obvious that that's the issue, but I just think it's better to state it for the record. That's all. Yeah. I Next think up, so. you know, I mean, it doesn't hurt. 96 Penzance Road Realty Trust, 96 Penzance Road, Wood Toll, Mass, for permission to repair an existing licensed timber pier. Mr. Newton? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Gladfelder, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy? Gladfelter, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? Brian, aye. Maury? Hello, Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Patton, aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Paul R. Dupee, Jr., 91 Adamancet Road, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to upgrade the existing subsurface sewage disposal system to a new Title V system. Mr. Newton? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Staff recommends a negative <coughs> two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so move. What? Well, um, Hawk, second. <laughs> That was almost a tie. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. God felt her eye. Courtney. Bird eye. Matthews eye. Kevin. O'Brien eye. Maury. Hello, Hawks eye. Pat. Harris eye. Peter. Walsh eye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Town of Falmouth Conservation Commission, care of Mark Kasbrzyk, 41 Spring Bars Road, 89 Spring Bars Road, and Spring Bars Road, map 39-15-046A-00, 00, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to pull invasive vegetation, remove exposed concrete, and to treat invasive vegetation with herbicide. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Carlo Hawk, so moved. Glad Felter, second. Now you had to stall and make Mark sweat it, huh? <laughs> All right, we got a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Glad Felter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. <coughs> Next up, Town of Falmouth, Town Planner, Care of Thomas Bott, Catherine Lee Bates Road, along south side of Shivericks Pond, Catherine Lee Bates Road, map 38A-09-019A-00, dash 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 and 130 Catherine Lee Bates Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to vista prune, remove selected non-native trees, and to stem treat invasive plant species with herbicide. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Hello, Hawk, so moved. Five, second. 
All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Why filter I? Courtney. Heard aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks aye. Pat. Iris aye. Peter. Walsh aye. Steve. Patton aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up are requests for hearing under notice of intent. <clears throat> Excuse me. All notice, all hearings of the Family Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. Bear with me. First up, James F. Mooney III, 188 Gansett Road, Woods Hole, Mass, for permission to raise R-A-Z-E, the existing single family house, and to construct and maintain a new single family house with an attached garage, new Title V sewage disposal system, in-ground swimming pool, spa, pool deck, cabana, boathouse, terraces, parking court, retaining walls, walkways, turf paths, fire pit, to conduct invasive species management, install restoration and mitigation plantings, and for all associated clearing, excavation, grading, utilities, drainage, and landscaping. I'd say that was pretty thorough myself. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have promoted the project team up um, we have Tim Santos, Dan Saline, Catherine Higgins from uh, Wilkinson, and Bob Amen. All right, who's taking lead? Um, I believe Tim is. <laughs> All right, Tim, Hi. you've been volunteered. Yeah, good evening. For the record, Tim Santos from Holmes and McGrath representing the applicant along with the design team. I'm going to share my screen and do a quick overview of the existing conditions and resource areas and then the proposed work and talk a little bit about the uh, mitigation calculations and then I'll turn it to Dan Celine so he can talk about the landscape portion of the project and then to Katrine from Wilkinson so she can talk about the restoration and um, invasive species removal land management plan. Can you see that? Almost. There we are. All righty. Again, the property is located at 188 <coughs> Gansett Ave, excuse me, Gansett Road. Um, the resource areas on or within 100 feet of the property are land under the ocean and land containing shellfish both to the west and east. On the east side of the property, we have Quisset Harbor, and on the west side, we have Buzzards Bay. There's also a coastal beach and rocky intertidal shore associated on each side, as well as the property has various flood zones throughout it. So we have a flood zone along the western side for land subject to coastal storm flowage that also wraps along the north side and then back down the east side for land subject to coastal storm flowage and a coastal bank, top of the bank that I'm kind of tracing here um and that's another resource area as well as a isolated wetland to the north of the property it's currently developed with an existing single family home boathouse as well as a driveway and a gravel driveway access that accesses the lot to the north and a wooden pier so i'm going to move up to the proposed plan to go over what the applicant's looking to do. So we're here tonight looking for your permission to tear down the existing home and construct a new dwelling, garage, cabana, pool deck and pool as shown here. All of the roof runoff will be tied into a series of dry wells. Um, there'll be a new Title V septic system associated with the new house and garage that's shown in this area here all outside of the septic system sited uh, appropriately over 100 feet away from the top of the banks 
Um, we're also proposing to reconstruct the bow house in kind and there'll be an expansion of parking expansion in this area right here off of the existing driveway. And we are proposing to install drainage for, for that parking court area as well. Um, in accordance with uh, the redevelopment guidelines, I'm trying, I'm hitting the wrong one, sorry. Uh, redevelopment guidelines, there is an increase in that alteration of uh, 7,134 square feet of increase of impervious within the uh, buffer zone B and we are proposing to offset that uh, with 15,000 square feet of mitigation plantings that are highlighted in this aqua green color here as well as this area here. Um, those mitigation plantings are placed um, in open areas that are currently either lawn or bare and a portion of it is an old uh, gravel driveway that extends to the north and ends that will be cut off just past the, the boathouse. On the, oh man, sorry. On the, the west side of the property, the applicant is proposing to do some invasive species removal that I have highlighted here. And this, I'll call it an apple green color that's dotted. Um, and Katrine will talk about the invasive species land management plan and about what they're going to be removing and what will go back in those areas. I, I think I've kind of done a quick overview of what I need to talk about. Um, I'll stop sharing and turn it over to Dan. Dan, do you have the, your landscape plans? Yes. I have them if you need me to pull them up. I think I'm all right. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Just, okay. Um, yeah. So uh, let me start with a, a broad overview. Um, you know, Tim always does such a you know, great job and a clear job of, of explaining the project that, you know, uh, I can't help but uh, I'd be redundant, um, which isn't perhaps a bad thing because it, uh, it helps ensure that everybody understands what we're proposing to do. Um, so I, I, th I think of the landscape as essentially having three uh, three major parts. Um, you know, one part uh, is the area that is uh, uh, to the to the east of the of the driveway and and or between the driveway and the and the harbor you know essentially this area um the uh the hatched area is mitigation so 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 the, that i refer to as it may maybe uh, area one you know would be again but between the driveway and the harbor edge um you know the features include the boathouse and the dock and the path you know to the boathouse uh, none of which are are going to be changed, although the the the, the boathouse itself will be renovated, uh, but not increase in terms of its of its footprint. Um, you know, the the work in this area is is primarily uh, mitigation, uh, planting of areas that have been previously you know managed, um, and uh, in, including the uh, the existing driveway. There's a there's a a gravel drive that perhaps was the original, you know, means of, of uh, accessing the point, <coughs> and still exists. And so much of that will be will be uh, removed, and, you know, and planted. And Katrin will speak to that um, in detail. So um, the the second part, which you know, I'll, I'll talk to you about. Um, Myself, but uh, I'll switch to a different plan to, to get into it. Is is essentially the the development area, you know, of the property between the driveway, you know, on the east, and and the the furthest west extent of, of proposed development, which I guess would be the pool, and there's a little fire pit up there. Um, you know, that that is essentially, you know, our our, our development area, as uh, as. As Tim described, you know, there's the driveway, there's the garage. Um, we have a, 
you know, stone wall uh, that uh, essentially, you know, serves as a transition, a grade transition from the driveway up to a, a landscape terrace and into the to the front door. Um, and then, then we have the house itself and the rear yard improvements. So I'll, I'll use another plan to, to get into to the more details in this area. Um, the, the third area that, of the site, uh, you know, of course, is, is between the development, the furthest west development and the Buzzards Bay shoreline. Um, historically uh, and, and, and still, uh, there are uh, turf paths that sort of traverse uh, this this landscape area, the buffer in, in this landscape area. Um, it's, it's heavily overgrown with invasive uh, species. Uh, thus, uh, Katrina and her you know, team have been developing a plan for invasive uh, species removal and and um, the um, and planting of native plants. Uh, so, uh, what I'd like to do is is go to uh, our planting plan, but out of concern that these plans get so complicated uh, by the proposed work and the existing conditions and all the legal and and uh, you know resource area lines, you know I've developed a you know quick sort of illustration that hopefully will help you just understand the the project more clearly and really the simplicity of it. You know it, it looks so complicated when you see it in the, in, in its all of its uh, engineering and legal, uh, you know, uh, representations. But so, the, so the the landscape and that portion of the project that I'm primarily um, involved with is uh, is this the, this development area. Um, the loop drive, uh, which is existing, will will continue uh, to be and will be un, unchanged. Uh, the, the landscape within the the, the loop drive, the, the island would be un, unchanged. Um, this is the route for uh, travel to the to the lot that lies to the to the north of uh, of this parcel. Um, to the loop drive, we're adding a, a parking court, uh, and essentially a means to to access you know the garage uh, to circulate in and out and and to provide some guest parking. Um, and to the to the south, uh, from the parking court, uh, there are you know walks uh, to the front door. Uh, first ascending steps uh, from the driveway to sort of a landscape terrace about 30 inches above, and then and then onto uh, the, sort of the entry entry deck. And uh, there's a second um, a set of steps and a walk you know here you know to a to a side door. Um, we have then the house, which which the architects uh, inform me is 30% smaller in terms of square footage than the existing house, you know, which I think is uh, is is interesting and and perhaps you know unique, uh, you know, in terms of the development of of uh, our waterfront properties. Um, to the rear of the house, uh, there's a there's a terrace. Uh, sort of a walk from the terrace to to the north, where where you access sort of the pool uh, complex. And then there's a small lawn area, you know, from which uh, uh, grass paths will lead, you know, down to the to the existing uh, paths uh, through through the buffer. Um, maybe zooming in here a little bit more. Um, so the So the pool complex involves uh, there's the there's the kitchen and sitting area here, um, a, a stoop, uh, a, a sitting area, sort of sunken sitting area in the deck, uh, a 25 meter pool, a cabana, and a deck. The X's represent uh, trees, primarily uh, pitch pines, uh, that you know we propose to remove and replace, um, you know, in similar or greater quantity. Um, there's there is a grass path that really leads from the from the driveway from the loop drive all the way through the property to the north of of the house and, and cabana. It's sort of the kind of an organizing you know feature of, of the property, and uh, so so we connect to that in several places and ways, um, and uh, and along the along the way you know out to the 
to the shoreline, uh, there'll be a, a small um, fire pit and sort of lawn seating area along around the fire pit. Um, so maybe just to kind of reinforce that point, you'll see that you know this is the grass path, and and so from various points, you know we have sort of stepped uh, turf uh, or ramped uh, steps down to the path, you know, from the house and from the from the deck, you know, uh, as well, uh, and an entry here to the to the lower level of the house. Uh, so in terms of landscape. I, I would say that, I mean, I, I submitted a, a detailed uh, planting plan. Um, I, I won't go through through the through it in detail. I think the details are are obvious in the plan and and uh, harder to present um, this this way. but but in in general terms, let me say that that the only ornamental plants that we're using on the property, I would say, are within twenty five feet of the house. You know the the landscape terrace. You know the area between the wall and the house will be ornamental. Um, you know the foundation plantings. You know will be ornamental, and and beyond beyond that, um, you know essentially we're using you know native plants. Um, as Tim said, this area is part of the mitigation, uh, and which Katrina will explain. Um, and um, so we're using native plants as we get, get further from the house. And also uh, minimizing, you know, lawn area and ongoing maintenance, you know, through the extensive use of um, essentially meadow uh, seeding uh, that rep is represented here by this sort of, uh, you know, limey green uh, color. So that sort of sweeps up, you know, from the coastal uh, zone and and sort of continues on, you know, through the property along along this path to essentially just. Um, Kind of reinforce that theme and and to and to to essentially try to immerse the the house and the outdoor spaces in a natural in a natural setting um, again here uh, to the on the towards the south end of the house um, let me turn it over at this point to to Katrin and uh, and then maybe i'll I'll uh, re-enter the the presentation after she's finished just to highlight some key points. Dan, before you go, okay. uh, the plan I got um, has the incorrect address on it. Can you make sure any plans that are submitted for yeah. the record have the correct address, please? Yeah, I, that was we caught that. I'm sorry, um, and we will uh, we will correct that and, and resubmit those those Thank plans. Thank you. Okay. You can stop sharing, sir. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Katrin, you there? Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. We can't see you. Okay. Thank you. Just, uh, you should be able to see my screen, I believe. Yep. Good oh, evening, Katrina Higgins, for the record from Wilkinson Ecological. Sorry. Go ahead. Is it not up? No. Uh, you're not sharing. Okay. Um, our oh, really? It just says that I'm sharing. Um, maybe would someone else be able to? All right. Tim, if like you share Wilkinson's plan, it's going to take me a second to pull it up. I'm not sure I have it. Hold on, let me look, please. I am sorry. Can you see that? No, it looks like it may be on its way here. Hmm. Well, I can I can begin and um, I apologize about that. I there don't know go. why it's not. It, it says that it's. Well, we just saw it for a moment. It was just. Oh. Okay. okay. 
Um, well, I'll begin. Hopefully, it it shows up. Um, I'll begin talking. There you go. Hopefully, you can see it. Okay, great. Okay, so our the proposal, as Tim and Dan both kind of uh, discussed, our proposal before you um, tonight proposes just under forty thousand square feet overall of invasive plant removal and native plant restoration, spanning over property. And in addition to providing more meaningful habitat for wildlife, this this work and this effort will also significantly improve stormwater function on the site. And so as you can see from this plan and also described in our land management plan, particularly on page three, there's really two uh, distinct project areas that we're focusing on specifically. On the eastern side along Quisset Harbor, you have in this bright green, um, we've identified this area as the mitigation area, which of course will serve as the specific mitigation for the post construction activities already described to you. And then on the western side, we have um, an additional area that um, volunteers its duration and it's a right along the Buzzards Bay um, property, or sorry, Buzzards Bay. And it's completely voluntary restoration of invasive plant management and replant in that area. So I think it's really important and hopefully our plan shows that clearly that there's we're really looking at mitigation and restoration, two different approaches um, on two different sides of the property. In terms of existing conditions for both areas, the mitigation area is primarily composed of, uh, currently of lawn, old hard packed uh, gravel roadway and barren areas. There are some vines and an occasional shrub uh, honeysuckle in there as well, but for the most part, it's, it's lawn area and you know the previously um, developed roadway and bare soils. Um, and then adjacent to that, there's some really nice woodland areas uh, predominantly comprised of large canopy trees such as oaks, maples, and hollies with some sparse uh, existing arrowwood and bayberry in there as well. And then when you go to the other side of the recreation area, uh, that varies con considerably from the mitigation area. Um, the condition is quite different. It, the vegetation here consists of a dense massing of native and invasive shrubs for the most uh, very uh, extremely dense, heavily invaded clusters of arrowwood and bayberry, and they're overtopped by bittersweet and porcelain berry. Um, large, very large shrub honeysuckle scattered throughout that area. And then when you go to kind of the probably highest point of the property in the north end of this area, there's a well uh, right in here. Uh, it is well wooded with native tree species, including oak, pitch pine, service berry, and then uh, the na non-native Japanese pine. So we're proposing, of course, to remove all the non-native invasive plants, as we described in our land management plan. Uh, much, much of this work can be completed mechanically using low impact machinery. And then in any uh, steeper areas or any more sensitive areas, we would be doing the, the work would be focused on hand work. And as, as you know, we, we thank you for the, the report, the staff report, it's really helpful to, to see that. Um, and and as, as was commented on the report, we are proposing to mow parts of the restoration area, the area closest to the lawn area. Um, and the native, because, and, and this would only happen in the initial phase, it would not happen in subsequent years, which I apologize, I think that our land management plan alluded to the fact that we would be um, mowing the leggy vegetation in other subsequent years, but really this is, and we can revise that, that wording in our land management plan. This is really just focused on the initial, um, the initial stage of, of, the, of our work. So we would like to come in there and, and mow this area right in here, um, and then allow the native species, the arrowwood, especially in the bayberry, um, to flourish, to regrow, and we would leave those those shrubs alone at that point. It's because that they these are these shrubs right now are extremely compromised and they're in really tough shape because they're virtually being enveloped by these vines, these invasive vines, and they're they're not um, they're not in healthy form, they're not in a natural form. So the idea is that we would then mow the area and allow everything to regrow, 
get rid of the invasive species that are growing in there, seed the area. But then again, like I said, let the, the native shrubs um, revive and allow them to grow in the form that they should be growing if the invasive species were not there. So I apologize that our land management plan alluded to the fact that we would be doing this subsequent times and that's definitely not um, what, we, what we intend on doing. Um, we've done this, this form of invasive removal on, on other projects and it's, it, we've had great success. It's, it's a well-respected best management practice of the ecological restoration. And, and given the site conditions in this area, we feel that it's, it's quite necessary and it'll be very beneficial for the overall project. So once this initial work takes place and the invasives are held at bay, we're proposing to plant both project areas um, shown, as shown on our plant specifications. We really kind of try to distinguish between the restoration and the mitigation. So you'll see on our plan in this lower area here, we've, we've called out area individually. Um, for the restoration area, we propose to plant nine native cedars, 119 shrubs, including beach plum, bayberry, black chokeberry, Carolina rose, along with a thousand, about a thousand uh, herbaceous species in addition to our seed mix. Um, and th those herbaceous species are focused on beach grass, little blue stem and switchgrass that really do the heavy lifting in terms of um, erosion prevention and stormwater infiltration. And of course we would be planting these, in particular the shrubs, around the existing native species that are there that will be coming back up, the, the viburnum and the bayberry that I mentioned in particular. For the mitigation area, that bright green area on our plan, we followed your mitigation requirements and I believe we did anyway, we tried to, um, and we've proposed 16 native trees to be planted in that area, including cedar, white oak, holly, and tupelo, and 855 native shrubs. Um, and when you look at that breakdown, it's really the, the, the big biomass shrubs that we focused on, 200 arrowwood alone, just, just in arrowwood, um, 87 bayberry, 147 black chokeberry, 72 red chokeberry, 106 inkberry, 81 plethora, 90 Carolina rose, and 66 with rod viburnum and six viburnum, I'm sorry, six service berry in, in, that, in that one area. Um, and just to clarify on our plan, you'll see there's green notes um, and for that area, one circle, one shrub symbol in that bright green area is representing three shrubs. Um, we found that that was the best way to represent clearly, most clearly um, what we wanted to propose there. Um, it's a lot of shrubs and it just made sense to just kind of limit the number of circles. So one circle in that green area equals three shrubs. Um, so overall, we feel that this is a tremendous opportunity for ecological restoration. Um, 25 trees will be planted overall and 974 shrubs. And it's a large scale, it's just about an acre of size of, of restoration area. And it's all in an order, uh, order to provide improved habitat value for wildlife and the stormwater function of the site. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions as with anyone else. Thank you. Um, uh, perhaps I could, um you know, just uh, expand on Katrin's presentation uh, a, a bit. And which is, you recall from my plan that I spoke about the, the meadow grasses and such that were you know, sort of coming up and, and uh, sort of surrounding the pool area and, and sort of extended along the path to the north of the house. And then also the area to the, to the west of the house, kind of towards the southerly boundary. Um, I mean, they, these areas are essentially, you could even imagine uh, expanding uh, Katrin's patch, you know, up into those areas because, uh, you know, that's our design intent is really to, to just, uh, you know, just continue, you know, to, for, for that, uh, those natural plants and textures to just sort of sweep into the, into the developed areas, uh, you know, of the site so that it becomes a unifying, um, you know, feature in a, in a more more an enhanced natural uh, system. Um, so um, let me just uh, highlight you know some some uh, benefits of this project that that are uh, included that are described in the in the narrative. Um, 
so all the structures on, on the project are outside of the, are, are either inside or outside of buffer zone B. Um, there are no, no proposed structures in uh, buffer zone A. Uh, the, the existing boathouse uh, will be renovated um, on the existing footprint. Um, a large portion of existing gravel driveway will be removed and used for mitigation plantings. A new sewage system will improve groundwater protection. Roof runoff and the pool drawdown will be collected in drainage structures. Uh, proposed mitigation plantings uh, totaled 15,000 square feet with 16 trees. Um, these will enhance the natural vegetated coastal banks, increase vegetated buffers, improve wildlife habitat, and limit flooding, storm damage, and pollution. Um, and the trees that, we, that we're proposing to remove um, in the buffer zone A and outside of buffer, outside of the buffer, are being uh, we propose to replace them uh, at a greater than one to one uh, rate. Uh, so I think with that we've we've covered the highlights. Uh, maybe just one last thing. Um, I think the, the the narrative describes this. We 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 asked uh, that it would um, of Jeff Jeff Johnson. Um, we're looking at the, we'd like you to understand that the coastal invasive species removal and the naturalization of the land area to the, on the Western side of the site um, be considered an elective, uh, you know, undertaking by the, by the owner. It, it's not mitigation planting, it's not required. Um, it's something we would certainly hope to do, uh, but, but the owner would like the opportunity to Understand, you know, the cost implications of that work, uh, you know, prior to, you know, committing to it. So, so we would like your the order to permit, you know, that work to be undertaken, but with the understanding that it, it may not be if if uh, if the donor decides later that to omit it from the project. You're good. Uh, Bob Ament, I believe, has a comment. Well, I just wanted to um, make a comparison to uh, what's there uh, now to give you an idea of the scope of this project. The existing house, um, we count 19 real rooms, finished rooms, of which 12 of them uh, qualify as bedrooms. There's a total of over 17,000 square feet of gross space and over 8,300 square feet of finished space in that, that house. The proposed, and it's all served by a cesspool that is uh, within just a few feet of the top of the coastal bank, uh, so in, in a zone A. The uh, proposed septic system is Title V system for five bedrooms. It's just sufficient for the uh, proposed house. Of course, it's uh, located outside of uh, jurisdiction, 100 feet away from any uh, uh, resource areas. Um, so although uh, this is a, a, a substantial project, it's actually a, a very substantial reduction uh, from the, in the use of the property from what's there, there now. Thank you. Tim, is there anybody else on the team? I, I think we're good. Good. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So the staff provided the commission with our comments and then the comments we received back. Um, so um, I don't know how the commission feels about how the project team is delineating those coastal bank buffers. Um, one second, um, we go from 25, kind of widens out to 50 where it's touching that little wetland. And then, you know, as soon as they're away from the wetland, it goes back down to 25. That's one contiguous landform and the commission has in the past required that buffer um, to be kind of uniform. Um, I remember specific, specific, project out on Gunning Point. 
Um, but you know, that's a small wetland the bank comes up. So, um, staff still considering that one. Um, the mitigation plantings, I think in the area of near the garage where that stone wall and steps are, that mitigation should be pulled about 10 feet off that stone wall. I think we just made, um, um, just a small adjustment in that area would be great. And Wilkinson, can you provide us an updated narrative that gets rid of the area will be mowed specifically on page four that you'll be mowing the area twice a year? Yes. Definitely. Okay. That was great. Cause that was a, a big concern of ours. So I'm glad to see that. That was just a typo. Typo. Yeah. Sorry about that. No. And just to clarify, I know you clarified the circles versus the numbers on the bright on the mitigation area. I'm assuming that's the numbers on the restoration side are, is the correct amount and not the circles. Correct. You really, the, okay, great. Um, so just to kind of summarize, so what you'll do is you'll go in there, you'll mow everything down because the, the, the native vegetation is a little too leggy. And then right. allow that to regenerate and right. instead of removing it and replanting it, allow it to regenerate and then go after the invasives that way. Exactly. Okay. In the flat areas, you know, closer to the, the top of the bank where it's steep going down to the water, we wouldn't do that. It, it's just really from the, that path, the, the path that goes, the, path, the area that's in between the pathway and the lawn. Yeah. yeah. That big kind of like blob right in the middle. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. That, that clarifies that for me. Um, can someone point out um, the land management plan also said that part of the area for mitigation, you were removing invasives. Can you kind of point that area out to me? Um, because we technically, you know, don't really allow for the removal of invasives and then that area to be used as mitigation. Right. Um, so can you kind of point that area out to me and where is it exactly? So, um, you know, I think it, it it's um, along that, for example, it would be along that um, hard packed driveway. There's just like a shrub honeysuckle here or there and some vines it's not like a big removal, a big square footage area of, of multiple shrub honeysuckles. It's just kind of like scattered randomly um, along the, the, right along the woodland edge, pretty much. Huh. But for the most part, it's bare, barren soil or there's, there's some viney vegetation growing, but um, in, in addition to the lawn areas and, and the, the gravel packed, uh, you know, pathway. If it, I could probably find a photo that represents that would be helpful. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would be helpful. Because like I said, the board generally does not allow for the removal of invasives and then that area to be planted with mitigation. Um, so I just want to make sure that that's, it's not, I mean, if it's just one or two shrub honeysuckles, I'm fine with it. Um, yeah. I just don't want to kind of get into this, this, this repetitive, like we were start seeing this on the plan. So understood. Um, a little concerned with that. Um, turn to remain. I think that's it for right now, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Newt, do you have anything you want to add? add. Mr. Chairman, I have nothing to add. Thank you. Okay. All right. And I think you spoke to this, but the, the easement, the access easement to the fertile lot, that, that will be maintained? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. Commissioner comments. Betsy?
I have two comments. One is, Jen, I'm not as concerned with the coastal bank issue as you are. Okay. I'm, I'm on the fence on it right now. So, yeah. yeah. And, but the second comment is, and it's the last thing that Dan said, if you're not proposing to do the restoration that you say you're going to do, give us, don't give us a plan with the restoration on it. So what we're, what we've been given is what we've been given. And it's not up to us to say, well, it's up to you to do this or not to do it. We expect what you give us is what you're planning to do. If you want to come back and get an amendment to do additional work, then do it that way. But I don't want to make a judgment on the plans that we just got, knowing that there's a likelihood that a lot of the work that's on these plans won't be done. Well, then, I, I, yeah, I, I appreciate that. And um, I, I, I do believe in the narrative uh, addresses this, uh, but uh, I would say that the way to proceed would be to, to consider this to be part of the project. And that if we later, you know, desire to omit it from the project, why don't we submit uh, for a revised order of conditions at that time? Well, I'd like I don't agree with that. I'd leave Sorry it up to you. staff. Jen? What was that? What do you think about that suggestion? Dan, repeat that suggestion to me again. People were like kind of going in and out. Well, I mean, rather than to you know, complicate this, uh, you know, this hearing and, and the processing of this notice of intent. Um, perhaps we could just consider the, the invasive species removal and the natural planting, the native planting along the Brothers Bay side of the property to be in the project, um, as opposed to what I described uh, a few minutes ago. Um, and that should we decide, should the owner request later that it be omitted that we would file for a revised order of conditions at that time. But we would proceed uh, on the basis of this hearing with the intention of, of installing the work as described on the plan. That's fine, Dan. I'm, I mean, the staff's fine with it that way for this hearing, but I think what Betsy's saying is in the future, if you're not gonna be doing this project, you know, if you're on the fence or you haven't decided, I'd wait and, and make a decision and then come in for an amendment. Yeah. I, I Second time that. we've seen this voluntary, it looks great. Oh, we're doing all this restoration. Oh, but by the way, it's only voluntary. We might not do it. So no, I understand. Um, nobody wants, you know, nobody wants to be of, uh, Charlie Brown, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I hear you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all, Jamie. Thank you. All right. Courtney. You're on mute. Courtney, you're on mute. On mute. Um, I want to follow on with that line of thinking. You know, frankly, uh, I'd rather see a project being proposed because when you can, you know, with everything that you present being done rather than, well, we may not do it after the fact because the, you're creating an impression. I'm, I'm not sure of the regulatory issues, but it kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, I'd rather you hadn't proposed this at all so we could evaluate this thing entirely on its merits. And then if you want to come in and do something like this, then you add rather than to subtract. That's, yeah, and I'm not sure I'm making a whole lot of sense there, but I'm trying to convey an impression that you come, come in with a project you're proposing, we all approve it, we feel good about it, and then you come back and say, well, I don't think we want to do that. You know, would we have approved the project had you not originally come in and sold this item to us? Those are the points, but I'm sure Robert Ahmed would have something to say about it. So, <laughs> you know, that's the only thing I have. All right, thank you. I agree. I think whatever plan is submitted is what should be considered. Mr. Ahmed, you're on mute, sir. 
Mr. Mooney has just called me and asked me to tell the board that he'll he'll just do the coastal bank restoration project as shown on the plan. So if you can include it, that'll be great. Thank you, sir. I was going to suggest the opposite that we take it off and uh, but if he's committed to doing it, uh, then we can leave it on. Fair enough. Thank you. Mr. O'Brien. Well, that said, I certainly have no objections to anything right now. Mm -hmm. I have to concur with um, Betsy, and I'm glad that the owner is going to move forward with doing what's proposed on the plan. And the planting plan, I was, I, I like the planting plan. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Pat? Um, I just have one request. I don't know if staff talked to you, you about this, Matt. I mean, Tim, I'm sorry. Um, I had difficulty reading the um, the buffer zones on your plan. It was very busy, and I got lost over by the garage as well as by the fire pit. I think I figured out where the A zone ends, the, the northerly coastal bank. The A zone goes, just skirts the fire pit, I believe. Um, and it looks like it's also skirting the edge of the garage. But I, I was hoping we could have plans that were more easily read and interpreted. Yeah, we can we can provide a, an 11 by 17 um, highlighted to show, highlight the A and the B. Um, I, I think what happens on, and I don't want to take up too much time because I know this has been going on for a while, so I apologize. I think what happens on these these bigger type projects is, with, with everything that's on the plan, it gets bogged down and, and very hard to read. So I, I understand your concerns and um, with these more complex ones in the future, I'll make sure that we at least get you some type of exhibit that's highlighted so you can understand the resource areas a little better to make them easier to read. Thanks, Tim, I appreciate it. No other comments, Mr. Chair? Peter? Uh, I'd, I'd like the project, no further questions. Steve. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I concur with Pat's comments. And um, I also concerned about the property lines. I realize that's not terribly germane to our discussion tonight, but they're fascinating. And if somebody could explain how this, excuse me, abuts with uh, the point. The box that's on the eastern side goes on the map. I'm not sure what that is. And the, is that on the butter property? Not terribly relevant to conservation, but. Uh, Tim, you should address that, I think. Yeah, I'm just oh. not sure what he means by oh. box. The rectangular box that sort of goes through the driveway. Um, it abuts the diamond point that uh, indicates the abutter property. I, I believe that's the, there's a 30-foot uh, a way. There's a, again, it's, it's hard to read, but there's a 30-foot way that allows the access out to that rear property. Okay. I mean, I could highlight a plan and show you, but I think- uh, Bob, Bob There's had, plenty on it already. Yeah, I apologize. But that that's that's what that box is. It's a way. Great. It's a great site. And the existing garage house that, that is nearly abutting the existing dwelling, that becomes part of a separate parcel? That's a separate parcel. Thank you. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ahmed? Well, I was just going to uh, clarify. Um, this is an extremely unusual lot, uh, but it is- Can't hear. Um, I think I'm um, not muted. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah, I can. Thank you. Uh, this is a very unusual lot, uh, but it was uh, uh, twice, uh, both in 1988 and uh, more recently, 
approved as it's laid out by the planning board and uh, by the land court. What's unusual about it is that the, um, the way that passes through the lot and provides the frontage and was the basis for the planning board's endorsement of the plan, um, it do, isn't a, a solid line. It's a 30 foot wide way, but it provides access to the uh, parcel to the uh, north. So we actually have a lot that extends on both sides of the way. And um, that's pretty unusual. All right. Any further comments, questions from commissioners? Jen, do you have anything you want to add? Just to that, I need a revised um, a revised narrative um, from Wilkinson on um, taking out the mowing, um, the annual mowing, and then to shift some of the mitigation plantings over by the that um, that terrace area because they are within ten feet of the structure and just kind of like readjust those. Sure, we can we can definitely do that. Both. Yeah, it's not a very big area. I'm sure you can find some place to put it. Um, yep. But we just need that ten feet away. Um, so, I mean, we can condition that, Mr. Chairman. Those aren't very big changes, or the, you can continue it if the board has additional changes they'd like to see. Can I make a motion, Jamie? Yes, ma'am. Like to make a motion to close this hearing and take it under advisement. Bird second. All right, we have a motion and a second before we do. Um, Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? No. All right. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to just add uh, a point regarding that small isolated wetlands, which is the uh, raises the concern of whether the buffer A zone there is 25 or 50 feet. Um, that particular isolated wetland um, is around 400 square feet. It's I think even less than that. I did get a figure from Holmes and McGrath, but I think it was about 400 square feet. So even though that's under your jurisdiction, it's a really small area and the entire area of uh, concern that Coastal Bank behind the, uh, or buffer to Coastal Bank behind the uh, proposed garage is a lawn area. Um, and if you uh, look strictly at the definitions, it seems to us that the, um, the bottom of that Coastal Bank um, right behind the, um, the proposed garage um, doesn't touch that uh, little isolated wetland. So we hope that the, the board uh, will agree that uh, we've properly demarked the uh, a, a buffer zone. Thank you. Jen, do you have anything to say to that? No. All righty. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing and take it under advisement. If there's nothing further, all right, taking the vote. Betsy. Lot filter aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks aye. Pat. Harris aye. Peter. Walsh aye. Steve. Pat and I. And if I could, Mr. Chairman, the small photograph behind my shoulder is my sailboat sailing into this location. Excellent. All right, it is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. I, I have the next one, Jen, if you want to leave me on. Okay. Thank you. I'm assuming Bob and Dan are done. <clears throat> Bob left. Okay. It's not going to wish us a good weekend yet. Well, Lucky you, I'm here all night with you guys. Oh, uh, <laughs> we are lucky, Tim. All right, moving forward. Next up, Craig D'Ambra, trustee, Beckles Road Realty Trust, 31 Beckles Road, Falmouth, Mass. 
full permission to construct and maintain a pool, spa, stone terrace, steps, and fire pits to reconfigure an existing patio, pool fence, pool filtration equipment to relocate the existing septic tank and generator to install mitigation plantings and for all associated excavation, grading, utility installation, and landscaping. For the record, I am going to recuse from voting. I will stay on as moderator, so you're stuck with me. But again, Susan, for the record, I am recused. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, Tim Santos is here for to present the project. Uh, good evening, for the record, Tim Santos from Holmes and McGrath, representing the applicant. Also with me this evening is Greg Billows from Billows Associate, who prepared the uh, landscape plan. So I'm going to share my screen, go over the site, and talk Thank about you. existing conditions, what we're going to do, and then I'll turn it over to Greg so he can review his landscape plan. Everybody can see that, I assume? Yes, sir. All righty. Uh, the property is located at 31 Beckles Road. Resource areas on over 100 feet of the property are land of the ocean and containing shellfish. Buzzards Bay to the, I'm going to call it northwest. We have a uh, coastal beach, land subject to coastal storm flowage, and then there's also a coastal bank um, to the rear of the property. It's currently developed with a just a single family home, as well as a patio to the rear, fire pit driveway and uh, an old historic structure, which we label as a cabana. It was previously used for people that came to visit the house. They would kind of use it as a changing area to go down to the beach and, and come back up. Um, there's no electric and there is no water in this structure. Uh, that was one of staff's comments. Just wanted to make you aware. I'm gonna kind of zoom in here, if you bear with me for a second. So what the applicant is proposing to do is to construct a pool spa to the west of the existing home, no closer to the existing coastal bank than the elevated deck. Um, there's also a patio and fire pit associated with it and a set of steps that brings you from this upper level at the top at the, at the pool down to the lower level. Um, there is an existing septic tank in this area here which we're proposing to relocate and will be tied into the existing leaching pit. Um, when we performed calculations for the redevelopment, and I'm trying to get over to them, um, there was an increase within the A and the B. The, the A was for the pool and the patio. This B is for uh, the pool equipment pad and the generator pad. So that required about 2,700 83 square feet of mitigation plantings and we're proposing 2,800 square feet. And they are located in this aqua area here and here, and as well as they're, we're proposing four trees as well. And there, there are some, these little areas, just so the board knows in the, uh, I'll call it apple green, cause that seems to be my favorite color. Um, this apple green color, those are kind of like landscape beds and, uh, landscape plantings and we're also proposing to remove the existing walkway and, and kind of build a nice new looking walkway in the same footprint and i'll stop sharing turn it over to greg and uh let him review his plan and then we'd be more than happy to discuss any questions you might have thank you Tom. greg you're up hi there folks Um, as Tim said, um, what we're proposing to do is um, install a, a modest pool splash spa terrace and a uh, set of stairs on the west side of the property and uh, with minimal impact to 
for proposed topographical work, mitigation planting along the border, uh, west side of the property is um, uh, gonna reduce the amount of lawn area, probably about 30% for the entire property. Um, the only thing I haven't included within the plant mix for the uh, mitigation planting is bayberry, everything else, beech plum, arrowwood, choke cherry, inkberry, uh, and cedars, um, because I'm kind of keeping a little bit in theme with that with some of the ornamental plantings around the house. Because, um, you know, as Tim was reviewing things, this property is very limited in space. Um, there's an area on the west side of the house that uh, when I was approached by the owners is, um, it's actually not the safest for the most part. It's, uh, if you've been out to the site, you've seen that big drop off where there's some landscape boulders. And uh, at some point in time need to be addressed. There's no access to the deck from the outside of the house on the Northwest corner of the house. And there's kind of a pathway right here that goes to nowhere. It kind of drops off almost seven to eight feet. Um, our intention is to build a wall to make it so the west side of the house does have proper access to the landscape. Um, move the air conditioning and the AC units, AC units, excuse me, and generator out of the A zone to the B zone up here. And um, we do have to adjust, like Tim said, the septic tank to move it out of the way for where it is in terms of a little bit of interference because it is a very tight site. And um, it's the only place we can do anything in the entire property because the setback from the road is very limited. The house is kind of non-conforming to town right now. Um, there's no place in the driveway side. There's no place other than on the west side of the house to make a, kind of a safe area for the folks just to accommodate them. Um, and also there's this really beautiful existing um, stone building uh, that predates the house and the proposed um, masonry program is to kind of keep in character with that and make it match. So same materials. And even the boulders that are going to be moved from the embankment, that kind of riprap slash boulder embankment ought to be reused on the property. And, um, and it's kind of soft touch, as soft as we can get. So there's not a lot of increased square footage. We're, we're modifying the rear existing rear terrace that um, goes back to the construction of the house, back to a 14 by 14 foot square on the north side of the house. And um, I'm just trying to think. And I think that's about it. Um, there's a project that uh, Dan Celine's working on next door. And, um, you know, we're trying to marry the mitigation slash restoration planting on both sides. So they look like a continuation of each. Um, so we're really collaborating, working with the same plant palette for that. So when it's all said and done, the continuation on 30, I think it's 35 or 37, uh, Beckles Road it looks like it's going to look like a continuation of what um, crosses the property boundary on 31. And, uh, and I think that's it. Any, any questions? You can stop sharing, please. Oh, sorry about that. Let's stop sharing. There we go. Thank you. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So everybody should be looking at a plan that was has a revision date of April 30th on it. They submitted revised plans in response to the staff's comments that we felt that the pool was moving closer than the present primary structure. So that was adjusted and those came in late last week. So I hope everybody picked those up. Um, so thank you for readjusting the pool location. Um, the plants look fine. The only question I have is pretty much answered all of them. So, Greg, where's that pool fence go? I see it going up the staircase, and then I lose it. 
I, um, I can I can trace it on mine, Greg, if you want to make it easier. Yeah, okay. So it comes if you're looking at the screen, Jen, it comes out of the front of the house here, comes across the, the front of the property line, down the side, and then it crosses right here and yep. ties in to the set of steps. Correct. So again, okay, so you know, all right. So that kind of actually, I didn't really see that before. That kind of changes things because we don't want those mitigation plantings in that pool fence area. Okay. Um, okay, we can. I can talk with Greg, and we can, yeah. we can adjust it somehow in order to get it out. Get it out of there. Yeah, we can pull that out and and line it along the edge of the pathway if necessary. And, Why uh, are you enclosing the, the the front part of it? Sorry. Why are you enclosing that large front area? Um, well, you know, it's at this point in time we want a side yard to uh, the folks have a dog, and they want a place that's fenced in for the dog. So okay. we wanted to make it so we've got we don't have a tiny little. It's too congested because the property is really small. The area is really small. The grades work best for that in terms of making that path and making the, the, the fence in the front yard um, work best. It's kind of an intuitive area where that side path is. And then I'm trying to get the, you know, I guess functional slash aesthetics, make the fence along the west side tie in as fence slash railing to the winder stairs. So it's a bit more, say a little bit, a little bit decorative, but still proper pool enclosure. No, I, and I get that. I just, my concern, uh, and that's fine. My concern is um, we like to keep these pool fences, you know, as enclosed as small an area as possible. Yep. But uh, I have no problem with the front yard area. I just, I don't, the staff doesn't recommend the mitigation plantings be in that. Okay. So, if that can be adjusted to remove the, the mitigation plantings or relocate the mitigation plantings or readjust the pool fence so it's outside of that area, that well, would be best. What we have right now, Jen, is like, I think we're kind of like down to inches <laughs> to make everything click. So we could pull the fence back and keep it to the east side of, I mean, I think that's our only option right there, the east side of the uh, mitigation planting um, kind of, and then and then cross the grass path. So um, that I think right now is really our only option to keep it out of mitigation. Okay. Okay. That's fine. I just, um, but it does need to be relocated to the okay. east. Yeah. Got it. I see along the path. Okay. Yeah, we can keep Sorry, it we, I just. I didn't pick, uh, we didn't pick up on that when we were reviewing it. So we, I apologize for that. I just didn't, I couldn't, I was, I watched it go up the stairs. I'm like, where'd it go? <laughs> so I think those are my only comments, Mr. Chairman. All right. Mr. Newton, do you have anything to add? I do not, Mr. Chairman, nothing to add at this time. All right. Steve, we're going to start with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dan hit my point on the pool fence. I I, uh, I didn't understand about the mitigation, but I did find it to be unusually large. And um, other than that, I, I although I would disagree that it's a small lot, it I understand that it is restricted in many ways to get the work done. And um, I'm I'm glad we're keeping an existing dwelling. And I have no further questions. Thank you. Peter. No comments or questions. Okay. Pat? No questions or comments. Thank you. All right. Maury? Um, the only question I had, Jen, with the um, high bush blueberries right down there on the face of Buzzards Bay. I mean, I've never seen a high bush blueberry on Buzzers Bay. So I'm just concerned of their, how they're gonna thrive out there. That was my only concern on the plan after all your questions and comments. 
Greg, do you want to address the high bush blueberry? Um, well, if there's a concern of exposure uh, on that particular area, then if need be, then I could shift them back inland um, and put a, um, say, beach plum in the area instead, arrowwood instead, if there's a concern on that. Um, I am trying to get some high bush blueberry in there, but yeah, if need be, it could be closer to where the large cedar, the existing cedar is along the property line, a little bit farther in. So they're not really on high exposure area. If that's a concern with everyone, then that's really, that's an easy adjustment to make if necessary. It's just Buzzards Bay is extremely harsh. I know. And I, I work on the water and I've never seen a high bush blueberry on Buzzards Bay in that type of location. So okay. if they were there, they probably died and yours will too. And I like the fact that you'll move the bayberry and the beach plum down there, which is what you predominantly see on Buzzards Bay. Thank you. Kevin. No comments. Okay. Courtney. I hope you can hear me. No comments. Okay. Betsy. Yeah, I have a question. I have two questions. <clears throat> One is <clears throat> the pool and terrace. Am I correct that the pool and terrace are going to be at the elevation of where the house is? First floor elevation. With okay. The Yes. And then there's a kind of walkway down. Is yeah. that right? A set of winder stairs, correct. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, do you have cut and fill calculations? Uh, well, I think that there's a little bit of fill work. Um, it's such a small footprint. Uh, can generate them if necessary. It is a small footprint. I think about like about, uh, about 800 square feet. Um, and to be honest with you, I didn't generate that, but can if necessary. Uh, there's not much other earthwork on that. I tried to minimize that. So it kind of purchased that area. And the, and the transition grading is accounted to a certain extent by some of the landscape boulders that are existing from the house. So uh, it's not like the amount of uh, site work involved next door. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but that being said, if, if, you know, if necessary, I can do a really quick calc on that. I just didn't calculate that. Yeah, well, it's it probably just not much cut work because we're not really modifying the grade where the septic system is going to get moved and along the mitigation planting. The only footprint uh, that's changing is really adjacent from the winder steps to a slope up to the house for that one area. Yeah, it looked like you might have to cut a little bit to the towards the road. Um, but, but I'm actually trying to make it so I'm not even modifying that at all because I don't, I'm, we're really trying to preserve the big old cherry tree that's just a really old, old tree. So I'm trying to work around there. So it's um, on the south side, that transition to the lawn in the front is very kind of soft touch. So yeah. if you can just really provide, provide that. What's that? Can you just provide that for the record? Sure. Yeah. 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 And, and my other question is, and I, I don't, play golf, but there's a patch of something down in front of, well, I call the front of the house. I guess people call it the back of the house, but facing the water yes. that people are driving from. Yeah. Jen noted that in the staff report, uh, Betsy, I don't mean to cut you off, but we, we did let the owner know that um, yeah. they, they can't be driving golf balls out into the resource areas anymore. So my question is that will be removed and that will be yes. replanted. Yes. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is coming from Robert Rubin, um, 31 Beckles Road, questions and concerns. One, the putting green in, in the plan is likely over 10 years old. Will that be replaced? There's no, oh, you're talking about in the front yard? I believe uh, so, yes. Yeah. Um, there's been no discussion on it. Okay. And are PFAS permitted so close to a beach in mass? I'm, I'm not sure what he means by that. 
Yeah, I don't know either. I'm so sorry. if you could so clarify you what you're asking, that would be helpful. And then number two, there is no existing retaining wall on the property near the beach and no plan for one as submitted. Do the designers do the designers and trust understand that they will not be permitted to fabricate such a wall without proper approvals? We're not proposing any wall near the beach um, either on this plan. Okay. Well, there's, there's been no discussion either, so I'm not sure where that's coming from. Protection of the bay. During the summer, you can see signs of algae on the beach undoubtedly caused by runoff from neighboring septic systems. The current plan shows the distance from the tank to the ha to house being 65 feet. It also shows the line from the tank to pit going downwards. Will there be regrading and or fill to make the tank higher than the pit? And what would be on the downhill side of the tank? Why is the conservation system not requiring an engineered treatment system on this property? I can I can answer the question in regard to there's no fill to have the tank be higher than the pit. The the tank is being put at the same elevation as the old tank, um, and it will tie into the uh, the leaching pit around the same elevation as the existing uh, leaching pit. The leaching pit is located to the uh, south west of the pool area adjacent to the winding steps and patio. So the, the, there's no fill required for any of that. And as far as whether or not any board requires a denitrification system, um, the project before you is for a pool and patio and mitigation plantings. So do you want to clarify what you mean by PFAS? And sir, you, oh, you can use the chat function. I cannot promote you up to a panelist. Oh, P PFAS are admitted by the plastics in the putting green. Okay. Well, I don't believe they're been, uh, Greg, you're saying they're not replacing the putting green. It's just going to stay there. As far as I know, there's been no conversation about doing anything with it. Okay. I don't know. I don't know when the putting green went in. Um, do you have any idea when the putting green went in, Tim or Greg? No, no. Okay. All right. Um, that is the only questions, Mr. Chairman. All right. Are there any further comments, questions? Um, oh, one more comment from the gentleman. He said, appreciate that the owners will stop hitting golf balls off the property. <laughs> Ready for said, that's all that was important. Just, just stop yes, hitting golf please, balls. You can do anything else. That activity. Ready for a motion, Jamie? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Claude Felter, I'll make a motion to close the hearing <clears throat> and take it under advisement. Heard. Second. Greg, are you going to get me that revised plan with that revised um, uh, pool and fence pool. layout and then modify the planting so, you know, you okay. don't have all your 45 high bush blueberry exposed to Buzzard's Bay? Got it. Easy. All right. Thank you. I'll, I'll talk with um, Greg tomorrow and I'll get try to get your stuff by Friday or Monday, the latest, Jen. Perfect. Thank you. And how okay. are for the calculations oh. best asked for? Yeah, the cut and fill, yes. We'll, we'll get all of that. That's not a problem. Thank you. All right, anything else? All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing and take it under advisement. I'm taking the vote. Betsy? Gladfelter, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Fellow Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Patton, aye. Seven in favor and one recusal. It is unanimous. We have closed the hearing. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. If you could put me back with the uh, pending people. 
and I'll see you guys. Justin, Tim's going to be on later in the hearing. So if we can move him back into attendees, that would be great. See you in a bit, Tom. Thank you, Greg. Good night. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Oh, and I'll email you tomorrow about a time for next week. Thank you. Great. All right. Next up is 42 Cape Carter has been continued. Therefore, Next is Matt Philbrick, 115 Racing Beach Avenue, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to repair an existing failed Title V septic system. John? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I just promoted Jack Landers Collie up to present his project. Thank you. Jack, you're up. Jack, you with us? He's yes. already sharing. Green. <clears throat> Jack, proceed when you're ready. Jack, we can't hear you, so you might be on mute. Jack, we still can't hear you. Is he up as a panelist? Yeah, he's sharing his screen right now. Unmute. Can Can you hear me now? Yes, yes we can, Jack. Yes. Okay, good. Let me start again. For the record, my name is Jack Landers Colley. I'm the civil engineer in private practice. And I've been retained by the owners of the property at 115 Racing Beach to prepare this plan, assemble the paperwork, and present it before you as well as the Board of Health. Um, what my clients intend to do is simply repair an existing four bedroom house septic system. They purchased this property in um, November of 2019. At that time, Title V inspection showed it passed. Uh, fast forward about a year and they were having problems and then they decided they better have it reinspected. It was found to be in failure. They sought someone to repair it and they retained me. Um, there is no increase in the footprint of the house. There is no increase in the design flow of the septic system. Um, this lot is approximately 45,000 square feet in size. Of that 45,000, probably 15,000 is upland. The remainder is BVW. The BVW is shown on the plan and was located by Brad Hall. The data sheet is included in the submission. The contours that are depicted on the plan are all done by on the ground instrument survey. They're on NAV 88. The flood zones, there are three of them, two of them being velocity zones, the third on the far east being an A zone. Um, we located the riprap in the top of the beach to the southwest. We determined that. There is no coastal dune or beach within 120 feet of the proposed activity. Um, if you look to the south and to the east, we um, have a BVW that, that circumnavigates the base of the, of the upland. And um, we have determined that the entire lot probably should be classified with the exception that the very northern piece of the property has some sort of coastal bank. Um, given the uh, interpretation of coastal bank in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, we truly don't qualify for a top of a bank, except maybe over in this area a little bit. The rest of it is at four to one or very close to four to one. Um, and slow. I did not, uh, you'll have to forgive me, I did make an error and I did not show the 50 foot buffer from the BVW upland. However, having said that, if you look to the south side of the, the plan in the house, we have a distance of 52 feet from the BVW to the SAS. So 
the 50 foot contour, oh, no, 50 foot contour, 50 foot buffer runs along in this manner, then comes across here and then back over to the right again. So the entire SAS and septic tank and pump chamber are in the A zone of that BVW. Um, the proposed project is entirely underneath the driveway. It's um, the existing system is underneath the driveway and underneath the present footprint of what we propose to design. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Jack. You're welcome. Uh, if you would, you can stop sharing. Thank you. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Jack, the only question I have is, have you already gone before the Board of Health? Yes, and they approved the project. Okay, great. That was the only question I had, Mr. Chairman. We had discussed whether you just, we hadn't filed a notice of intent just because it was so close to the wetland and such a tight site, so. Got it. Mr. Newton, do you have anything to add? I do not, Mr. Chairman. It's as Jen said, you know, the septic is sited pretty much in the best location um, according to the site conditions. Thank you. Jack, can you just point out on your plan where the existing cesspools are real quick? Um, yes, I can. Your staff actually included it in their staff report. We just didn't have time to make the changes before the meeting. I will okay. submit a revised plan that shows that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Maury. No comments. Uh, no questions. Thanks. Peter. No questions. Steve. No questions. Thank you. Okay, Betsy. My only question is: Is there a story about the buffalo on the lot? <laughs> I don't, if there is, I don't know it. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to follow this, that. This property has a long history, Elizabeth, and you may know some of it because it was owned by um, the Clausen family. So there's a history here. That has to do with buffaloes? I don't know that. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll try to figure that one out. All right. First hearing, we're going to continue because of a buffalo. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney. No comments. Okay. Um, I appreciate, just to say it to the staff, this is a notice and not an RDA. So uh, just given that site, it's kind of tough. So I like the detail. Thank you. Kevin? No, no questions, Mr. Chen. All right. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function? No, Mr. Chairman. All right. May I make a motion? Please. So this is Gladfelder, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Harlow Hart, Hart, second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. There's no further questions, comments. All right. Taking the vote, Betsy. Gladfelder, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Hello, Hawks. Aye. Pat. Harris. Aye. Peter. Walsh. Aye. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous. This hearing is closed. Thank you, Jack. Thank, Thank you, Jack. You. Have a good evening. Bye, Jack. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, next up, continued hearings under notice of intent. Sarah Chirano Flores, Nutter McLennan, McLennan, sorry, and Fish, LLP, 24 Willis Lane, East Falmouth, Mass. 
for permission to raise R-A-Z-E, the existing single family dwelling and garage to construct a new single family dwelling with garage to install a pool, to re relocate an existing shed, to install mitigation plantings and to conduct invasive species management and restoration. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have promoted Sean Riley, Seth Wilkinson, attorney Toronto Flores, um, Charlie Page. I think I got everybody. Is there anyone else I'm missing, Mr. Riley? No, I think you've got everybody. Okay. Thank you. For the record, Sean Riley, Coastal Engineering uh, and team representing the applicant. Um, the last time we were here, there was a, a list of questions and requests for additional information from staff. Um, we were asked by the chair to uh, dot our I's and cross our T's and work with staff. And uh, we actually submitted um, the package to uh, Jennifer and staff a few weeks ago uh, so that she could review it and make any comments. And we adjusted things and then submitted the information uh, to you all for your review. And uh, with that, I'll just open up to any questions you may have on the information that we provided. Okay. Does anybody else on your team want to start with any comments? Seth, would you like to start uh, with your comments? Uh, sure. I could just, uh, for the record, Seth Wilkinson, Wilkinson Ecological Design. Um, the, the comment that uh, pertain to our scope of the project just had to do with a, a small discrepancy. Uh, we weren't giving ourselves uh, quite enough credit for the plants that we had um, proposed. We, we uh, identified that and corrected that with staff. Basically, we were showing 10 more plants graphically than we had captured in our, um, in our, our planting list. Um, so that's been corrected. Uh, the mitigation area is larger um, than it was last time you saw it uh, to accommodate for roof overhang. Um, and, uh, you know, happy to answer any questions the commission might have about any of that. Thank you. Anybody else want to add anything? Nobody has to speak. I just want everybody to have the opportunity. That's all. I'm here to answer any questions, but, uh, all right. Thank you. So there was a, uh, Sean Riley again, there was comments about, uh, providing, uh, some drainage details. Uh, we've actually started working on that today, um, and we should be able to provide you with a, a detail sheet that has uh, the drainage details, the, uh, the trench drain detail along the retaining wall. Um, so we should be able to provide that to you tomorrow. Um, but other than that, I think uh, the, the, the staff's comments for this go round was, uh, was very, uh, very small. So with that, we'll open it up to any questions you may have. Could whoever is right. sharing this the screen not share? Let me see. Oh, that's you. Who's sharing their screen? Is it me? Sean? It is you, Sean. Okay. Hold on one second. Oh, hold on, sorry. I'm having an issue here with that. Oh, what's going on? Hold on. It seemed to have, oh, there it is. Got it. It All jumped right. over to my other monitor. I was looking for it on this monitor. It was over on my other one. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh -huh. Jen, do you want to start? Um, yes, I think that you'll provide us with the, the, the cross sections and everything tomorrow, Sean. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the, the project team did a great job answering the staff's questions. I have just one quick thing. The cut and fill counts, and I can't put my hands on them right now. Um, you're bringing in, you said, 5,000 cubic yards? That's correct. How many trips is that? It's a uh, lot of trips. I know about the fill. Yeah, that'll be that'll be a couple, probably a couple hundred truckloads. Um, but again, this is a very very uh, large site. It's over five acres, um, and you know, given given the elevation of the flood zone and the the um, the topography on this lot is very low, um, and we're not we're not um, 
we can't have a basement. So everything's got to be essentially uh, most of the, the house is slab on grade. Um, we've got to elevate the septic system. So uh, most of that is the reason why uh, the amount of fill that we're, we're bringing in just to get the, um, the elevation above the flood zone uh, with the house. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's about it. I was just kind of curious, like, you know, that was a tremendous amount of fill for the site. Um, so just, you know, wanted to. Yeah, we've, yeah, we've, we've yeah, we've, uh, we've had uh, tighter, tighter places that we've brought in more. So we understand it's a lot. And, and the, uh, the group that we're working with is very experienced in um, the work of, of bringing in fill and okay. things around. Okay, great. And Seth, thanks for clarifying the numbers and you had sent that email late today. So thank you for that. Um, that's all we have, Mr. Chairman. Most of the other concerns um, have been addressed. Mr. Newton? I have no additional comments, Mr. Chairman. All right. Commissioner comments, Steve, we're gonna start with you. Thank you for that, Mr. Chairman, but I don't have any comments or questions. All right. Peter? Uh, no questions. Uh, no questions. Maury? Um, let me see. Am I unmuted? No, uh, you're fine, you Maury. Okay. Um, the fill kind of gave me a little bit of a start. Um, and I guess, you know, so basically they're, they're raising the grade up so that their, their house is on slab out of the flood zone. The question I have is that, and maybe I missed it because there are a lot of plans here, but I really didn't see any spot elevation changes shown on the plan that clearly. And I just want to know where the fill is going and how close to the edge of the, you know, into the B zone area. Um, I know it's a large lot, but it's pretty condensed where you're putting the fill. So I just don't want it to create a diversion for floodwaters to go and deflect into other people's properties or anything else. And that, those, I was really concerned about the amount of fill. And, and, if, and if I could address that real quick. So part of, I'll just share my screen. Um, part of what we're doing uh, within the V zone is creating a, um, a more sloping flat terrain. Uh, you can see the, uh, this is the, 25 foot off of the mapped V zone. And uh, that's part of it is making this transition. So we don't have any abrupt transitions that would divert or direct floodwaters onto uh, adjacent properties. Anything that would come in as the floodwaters recede would roll back out uh, along the gentle slope. Um, but the, the, the bulk of the, um, the fill is to, again, elevate the structure um, to provide the uh, separation to groundwater for the septic system uh, back in this area. Um, we would have a mounded system otherwise, um, but essentially it's really just trying to um, make the house fit in the position that it is as far back away from the resource areas as possible uh, without having any negative, negative impact. Okay, so you just made a comment that um, kind of concerned me a little bit, but it goes in front of the board. Have you been in front of the board of health? Uh, we've been coordinating with the Board of Health. Okay, we don't have because to, you, can't don't have put a, you can't put a septic system in fill. It has to be on un, undisturbed soil. So yes. you just said you're putting fill in and putting it up so you'll be out of groundwater. We, we, have, we, have, a, we have met with the Board of Health. They have seen the plans. Uh, we do not need a um, – we have the four feet of naturally occurring material above the, the um, groundwater elevation. Um, so we, we do not need to go before the board. You, well, you do have to go in front of the board to get a we, health permit. So I would just like that in the file. Sure. Because you're supposed to have all your permits prior to coming to us. Hey, yes. Ms. Newport, can... It's a, it's a disposal works construction permit that we'd be applying for. So but we can, we can provide that. Yeah. Um, so it isn't just a moderate slope. You're going, I mean, it, I'm looking now at this, it's eight feet and it's going to 12. That's a four foot. I mean, four feet of fill is a lot of fill and it is changing the entire grade on that site. Um, 
And yeah, it's great. It's sloping away from your property now, but where is it going? Because now it's not retaining anything. It's sloping away. It's, it's sloping. Anything that rolls in during any of the storm events will roll back out to the ocean um, through the vegetated buffer that we're creating. The same way that it's rolling now, the, the drainage patterns, the flow patterns aren't changing. You can see the contours, uh, the existing contours are flowing in that same direction. Okay, I guess I'm not gonna belate, it's a late night, but I'm not happy with it, thank you. All right, Kevin. No, con con uh, no comments, Mr. Chairman. All right, Sean, if you would stop sharing. Yes. Thank you. Courtney? Heard no comments. Betsy? I have to agree with Maury. I had no idea we were building a, a hill and putting a house on a hill. It's my only comment, Jamie. Okay. Um, so if you're, uh, Sean, if you're putting the septic system on, uh, you said four foot ground separation, uh, groundwater separation. It's five, yeah, it's five feet of groundwater separation. Five feet. Okay. Yeah. And that's virgin soil you said. Yes. Okay. So as opposed to doing a raised, uh, system, you're just raising everything around it. Yeah, it's just it's just a part of the design. It's uh, it wasn't that we were raising the entire property for the for the septic system. It was just a result of of the design. Okay. Um, Jen, what do you think about the drainage details? <sighs> Hang on. Just had it. I mean, they're gonna, Sean. You're gonna provide the cross sections, correct? Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll provide the cross sections. Uh, we've provided the plan view showing the low points of where it's gonna be yeah. selected for the driveway. Um, all the roof runoff directed to the dry wells, and the, we're gonna show the additional uh, trench drain that we call out along the top of the um, along the retaining wall. So, and we will provide you those cross sections. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I got to wait until see until I see those cross sections, but it should be okay. But I can't. Right, but we have to wait for that, correct? Yes. And maybe by that time they'll have the uh, Board of Health because I don't know if they've done a perk test there. I don't even know what the soils are. Don, have you done a perk test out there or no? Yes, we submitted the um, the septic design as part of the uh, revised package. Um, so we've got uh, medium to fine sand that the septic system will be going into. And the perk was uh, less than two minutes an inch. That's good. That's perk. So I just hope you're not going to be putting clay in there if you have nice perkable soil there. No. Okay. Maury, it's um, if you have your plan, it's C two three one. I did. I just saw it. I just found okay. it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Jen, is there anything in the ch uh, public chat function? Not at this time, Mr. Chairman. All right. Are there any other questions or comments from the board? All right. Do we need a continuance, Jamie? I believe so. Um, so to be clear, um, what I, I understand we need is the drainage details and the um, something from the Board of Health. Is there anything else, Jen? No, I think that's fine unless the board wants to see something else. I think we've pretty much they've provided all the information you guys need to to make a decision. Um, just need those final drainage plans. All right, but do we need them in record to close the hearing? That's my that was my question. Well, if you want to know the staffs, you know, if you want us to look at them, Jamie, and offer you an, a, a, any comments, then we have to keep it open. If you just want them submitted to have them for the record, then close the hearing and take it under advisement. But 
it really is up to you. I'd prefer if I, you know, I'd prefer to see the plans prior to closing hearings. I mean, this isn't just like modifying the pool fence. Um, so I'd prefer to see those plans. Should be continued. Oh. Okay. So, so um, question is, do you guys want to see this on the 19th or do you want to wait till the 26th? Uh, the 19th will be fine. Well, sir, it's really up to the board. They oh, have, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking me. I'm not going to be here on the 19th. So I'm trying to kind of keep that hearing fairly short for the agent. So um, it's up to you, Jamie. Do you want to put it on well, the 19th would, or the 26th? Would you be able to review it ahead of time? That's that's probably yes. the question. I mean, okay. we can review it. Okay. And then we need um, something from the Board of Health, something that they've reviewed and approved and I, I don't think this exceeds the the town um regulation on how many cubic yards of fill can be brought onto a site it used to be a thousand cubic yards but i think it's 7500 now but you might want to look at that sean it's a zoning thing but, um i don't know if it's planning i think Okay. Uh, maybe zoning. I don't know, but I just know that they did change it. But again, that's a lot of fill. We'll we'll look at that on one site, and we'll we'll address that. Thank you. Okay, so I think we're looking at we're looking for a continuance with both those items. You ready for a motion? Yes, ma'am. At the request of the applicant, um, make a motion to continue this till March nineteenth. No, May 19th. May 19th. Glad to Hawk second. All right. So we have a motion and a second to continue this to 519. Sean, are you clear what we're looking for? Yes, I am. Okay. I mean, we're not looking to keep kicking this down the road, but you know, information is information. We need it in the record. Understood. Thank you. All right. So with that said, I'm gonna take the vote. Betsy. Glad felt Courtney. Heard aye. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Maury. Harlow Hawks, I. Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Walsh, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have continued this until 519. Thank you, everyone. Thank you Thank all. You. Have a great Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Justin, can you move Seth back into an attendee, please? Who do we have up next? Tim. All right. Next up is Kristen Wallace, 122 Ostrom Road, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to construct an addition with associated grading. Tim's Mr. laughing Chairman. at me, but I don't know why. No, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm sorry. Next. Did we already continue this one? No, we didn't. Mr. Chairman, we received a continuance request late for this one. So the applicant is requesting a continuance until May 26th. Mr. Chair, at the request. That's folk. Mr. Very Chair, important. at the request of the applicant, I'll uh, move to continue this to the 26th. There is a second. All right. We have a motion and a second to continue this hearing until May 26. Betsy? Well, I felt her eye. Courtney? Bird eye. Matthews eye. Kevin? O'Brien eye. Maury? Carl Hawks eye. Pat? Harris eye. Peter? Walsh eye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have continued this hearing until 526. Tim, thank you for that compelling argument. <laughs> Let me know who to bill. <laughs> All right. Next up, our request to amend an existing order of conditions. 
Bay Ridge Realty, LLC, 127 Shorewood Drive, East Falmouth, Mass. Request to amend the order of conditions for Mass DEP number 25-4529 to construct a concrete block retaining wall under the seaward edge of the approved deck and for associated grading. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I've promoted Tim Santos up to present his project. Uh, good evening, for the record, Tim Santos from Holmes and McGrath representing the applicant. And with your permission, I'll share my screen. Yes, sir. Uh, this, this project uh, is located at 127 Shorewood Drive. It was before you, I think last February, last winter, um, at which time the board issued an order of conditions to demolish the existing home and to construct a new home. If you've been to the site, uh, the new home's going up, um, it's underway. And what the applicant's looking to do is, I'm just gonna zoom in here. Initially there was, um, the, the deck and the steps were approved and there was a, uh, an, a basement access in this, uh, I think this Northern corner of the foundation to access the basement. And what the applicant has done is he's actually put a set of sliders in the, at the basement level. So he'd like to construct under the edge of the deck, a uh, block concrete wall. There's no increase in the size of the, the deck. We're just looking for permission to construct that block concrete wall under the deck so that they would be able to gain access to the basement. Um, and we're also gonna propose a, a drainage structure. So any rain that might, rain through the uh, the deck would be collected and into a dry well. Um, we did meet on site with staff to discuss this and we felt the best uh, way to uh, obtain this approval would be to file uh, an amendment. So if the board has any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Oh, one, one other thing, I'm sorry. There was a discussion with the neighbor. He, he would like us to propose this proposed tree that was approved originally and move it down to the uh, the southern lot line and the uh the owner of the, of the property has no problem doing that so we figured we could discuss that with staff at the time of installation if if the board would be happy with that or we could submit a revised plan tomorrow showing the the tree at the southern side so i apologize for that thanks um jen yes mr chairman we did meet outside and um Tim, you're going to reestablish the grades? Yes, all, all the grades will be the original grades on site. Um, if you've been to the site, you can clearly see the backyards bare. Okay, thank you. No questions, Mr. Chairman. All right, Mr. Newton. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. So I had received um, an email from a concerned abutter, uh, I believe it was yesterday afternoon. I forwarded that to the commission this morning. Everyone should have received that. Um, for the sake of transparency, I know he was, he was very concerned about butter, so I'm just going to um, read his email to make sure those comments are heard. All right. My name is Skip Bandini. I live at 125 Shoreward Drive. I appreciate the contractor constructing a home that style-wise fits in the neighborhood at 127 Shoreward Drive. All the subcontractors have been great, and we all seem to work well with each other. Due to another commitment, I will not be able to be on Zoom call, so that is the reason for this email. The reason for this email is twofold. First, with a larger foundation replacing the old foundation and water being displaced, I would like to ensure water is not going to flow to my house and to penetrate our finished basement. We have never had an issue in the past. My questions are only to ensure this is to remain the case. These questions have no adverse feeling towards the contractors or engineers. So will the grade of the property remain the same or will the property be pitched towards both neighbors home? Who is the person to verify the grade at the end of the project? I understand there's three drywalls, two for the gutters and drown spouts and one main in the middle for drainage outside of the sliding glass doors, four feet below grade. Regarding these drywalls, are they all built the same? Do they have landscape fabric over and around the stone to prevent clogging? If not, what is in place to prevent clogging? Will there be clean outs of the downspouts to clear lines? 
On the updated submitted plan, it states they want to build a four foot high wall outside the sliders to maintain grade. However, there's no detail of this area on the plan. Where does this wall start and end? And what are the dimensions? Does it have a footing? Virtually enlarging the foundation. Is this wall going to go over the drain that is placed outside of the sliders that go to the middle drywall? Or when will the final location be determined? My sense is a detail of, of the area on the plan would be required and that would answer these questions. At this point, no detail exists. So these questions aren't answered looking at the plan. My sense is a detailed plan of area, including the patio with elevations would be requested to, to answer these questions. Secondly, the plan shows a tree to be planted uh, directly at seven. My living room, since we're close to the water, my backyard, which is small already, has seven existing large trees a year ago. Uh, we agreed with the engineers to move this tree to the other side of the lot. When I saw the new plans, I inquired, and the answer was Concon would have to approve. So with all respect, this time I'd like to request approval to have the tree on the border of my property moved to the other side of the property as agreed last year by the owner. The house is a welcome addition to the neighborhood and very appealing. Thanks for your time and consideration. That is me, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And Tim, that is the email I forwarded to you earlier today. Yes. So can you address some of those concerns? Yeah, there'll be no great changes like previously stated. The patio was the same patio that you previously approved. Um, as far as the drywalls go, there's a detail shown on the plan. Uh, the hole is supposed to be wrapped with filter fabric around the sides and across the top. Um, as far as the block wall, it's underneath the deck as we discussed. Um, I believe it's a four foot high or it's right under four feet high block retaining wall that just allows access into the basement. There, there's no expansion of the footprint previously approved. So I believe that should address all his concerns. I mean, the grades will be done at the end when we submit for a compliance plan. All right. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman? Didn't know if you had anything else. Hmm? Never mind. All right. Commissioner comments, Betsy. Not much. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Tim. Courtney? No comments. Kevin? No comments. Maury? They didn't address the tree. The, the, the tree I said I'd move to the southern lot. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Uh, that's okay, I, I think you're still on the uh, the, the island. I know, on the boat, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Maury, do you have an opinion about moving the tree? No, I'm, I just didn't hear him say that. I ignored oh. I just ignored him. Wow. <laughs> Most women do. <laughs> Don't take it personal. All righty. Pat. No questions. Thanks. Peter. No comments. Steve. No comments. Thank you. All right. Jen, is there anything in the um, public chat function? No, Mr. Aside Chairman. from what occurred. You ready for a motion, Jamie? Yes, ma'am. Tim, you'll you'll give a new plan with the tree on the other side. It, yes, I, I can bring that over tomorrow. Okay, so I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Third, second. All right. If there's nothing else, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. All right, Betsy. Glad felt dry. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthew's eye, Kevin. O'Brien eye. Maury. Oh, Hawks eye. Pat. Harris eye. Peter. Walsh eye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. I have one more, so you can put me back. Thank you. It's up next, so you just oh. hang in. All right, let me text Josh. Thank you. I see Josh. He's in the attendees. Okay, thank you. All right, next up are hearings under an enforcement order. First up is 50 Weatherglass Lane, which has been continued. 
Next up are continued hearings under an enforcement order. First up, John P. Dargan, trustee, VF Barletta Irrevocable Trust, care of Ron Gillis, 19 Noshon Circle, West Falmouth, Mass., unpermitted removal of vegetation, installation of stonework, and excavation within conservation jurisdiction. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Tim Santos and Josh Mark from CMS Landscaping, Chris Mark Sons Landscaping, yep, um, are here to um, kind of give the board an update on where they are and kind of um, let the board preview a a a you know a, a draft lands uh, draft restoration plan, um, and if the board feels comfortable with that plan and moving forward, then we'll finalize the plan with grades, um, combining both um, CMS landscaping's plan mm -hmm. with Homes and McGrath's plan, so we can have one comprehensive plan to kind of restore the property. If you remember, this is the property up in the cliffs that had been, the buffer had been removed and excavation was taking place. There were a lot of granite slabs on the property. All of those have to be removed. All of that, uh, the original grades of the property have to be um, reestablished. And we have various plans through the years from Homes and McGrath that kind of give us a very comprehensive of view of what those grades were. So we kind of know what they were, as well as a number of the trees on um, that were a number of mature trees that were um, survey located and labeled on these plans. So we had asked um, uh, Josh to take a look at Holmes and McGrath's plan and see what he could come up with towards restoring the buffer to this property. And so here, I believe, Josh, are you ready to share your plan with the board? You're on mute. Bottom left microphone. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Sorry about that. I'm not great at this uh, Zoom meeting thing. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll share. I'll share the plan with you now. Um, Josh, can you identify yourself for the record, please? Sure. Uh, yeah, Joshua Mark, uh, CMS Landscape, and uh, we're working for Barletta. Thank you. You're welcome. Jen, I'm, I'm going to share the screen, correct? Yeah. Please. Got it. That work? Yeah, there it is. Good job. All right. All right. Uh, so uh, essentially what we're trying to do is restore the uh, the forested buffer uh, at 19 Nashon. Um the proposal is to um, essentially what we're, what, what we're looking to do is uh, we're going to install uh, a tubulo grove up in the uh, south corner here. Uh, there will be 240 uh, plants in the disturbed buffer. And then we're going to supplement the understory of the. There's another area where um, that needs to be restored in the the south area there. So, Josh, what can you explain what the labels mean, like the two belows versus the cedars? Sure. So uh, Jen's been terrific. Uh, she she helped us uh, work through this uh, restoration plan. Um, on the on the coastal bank, the, the steep slope. We're looking to um, 
we, we want to put back the, the same number of uh, trees that were there. Uh, obviously, it's a, a, a tough area to plant new trees. So we have uh, smaller potted plants in that, in that area. Um, so th those would be like the cedars working up the slope. Uh, we have uh, 10 gallon deciduous trees that will be, you know, like oaks, uh, the white oak. And then uh, in the, the, the areas where it's, you know, uh, the, the area that's more, uh, Oops, sorry. Uh, on the upper area, it'll be the higher caliper trees to re replant the uh, the buffer. So, if I can jump in here real quick, Mr. Chairman, we'll be working with with Josh and Tim to kind of like button up this plan. Um, we just wanted to, to see if the board had any additional comments. I'm still not convinced that I want to work with Josh a little bit more on the cedars on the slope. That's a pretty steep slope there. Maury, you may want to help me out with this one. Um, see what your thoughts are planting those seven gallon containers on that steep slope. So I do have some concerns with that. Um, we do need to kind of look at what the 240 shrub plantings are going to be, whether that's going to be, you know, how that's going to be a mix of understory, um, understory plants like bearberry um, uh, with more substantial shrub layer. And Tim, I have probably a question for you. The mm -hmm. area where it says supplemental existing understory planting, that's the area that's all blocked off with those granite slabs? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, that area is, the, all those granite slabs are coming out. Yeah, so the, I wanted to discuss that to, tonight with you. Does, you know, does the board want them left there and buried? Do you want them taken out? How do you want us to address that? You know, clearly we don't want to cause any more disturbance to the bank that's already been caused. So, um, you know, if, if it's if it's better to leave them and bury them and make sure we can plant so that the, the roots and the trees don't, you know, it, it doesn't affect the, the, the vegetation, I'm, I'm sure Josh can do that. Um, so it's kind of a discussion that we wanted to have with the board as well. So you're saying just, I'm just asking. No, I know. So you're saying, um, hang on, let me. Give me one second. I'm going to log into the server so I can bring up that photo to show the commission. You should have told me you were going to ask this. <laughs> um, kind of just popped into my head. No, it's okay. I just want to make it's sure okay. the board knows what you're asking. We want yeah. Josh to stop sharing. Yeah, Ooh, please. Can you stop Sorry. sharing real quick? Thank Those you. Those slabs were brought in Sorry. on site, were they not? They were. So, I mean, staff would, would recommend their removal. They were brought in. They clearly shouldn't be in that vegetated buffer. Um, but I just want to show the board what they look like right now. While you're doing that, let me ask Josh a question. Jamie? Go ahead. Josh, were those symbols that look like coronavirus, little coronaviruses, were those cedar trees? The number seven's Betsy, I believe, is cedar trees. Thanks, Tim. 
And then the ones with the T in them, those were the Tupelos? The big, right. big, yes. okay. Did we get a copy of that plan? It, it went to Jen, um, you know, we, we didn't submit a revised, not, I'm not gonna call it a revised plan, but we didn't submit a, a plan because we wanted to kind of just discuss uh, with the board members tonight, as far as, you know, what would go back for trees and shrubs. And if we were on the right, um, the right path in order to reestablish that area. So yeah, we, we it, it did go to Jen, we did talk with her. Um, she does have a copy of the PDF, but they, I, there were no plans submitted. We figured we could work, show the board um, just kind of the schematic and then work to get a plan to you. We're not closing this airing yet tonight, Jamie. Okay. Um, but I mean, I can certainly send the board that version of the plan for the max hearing. I apologize. I'm going to share my screen real quick. Okay. You guys see that? So this is that area yeah. that I'm talking about. These block. And I think they go back here, don't they, Tim? Yes. So they really kind of buried these, these oaks. And here's a better version of it. And it gives some scale as we're standing there so you can see. So I really do feel very strongly that they need to be removed. They should be removed and then the grade will be reestablished, correct? Correct. Yeah, the, the question just was more and, and maybe not all of the blocks, but the ones that are kind of buried, do you want the ones in buried into the bank or into the slopes like removed? So it, it's just a question. Um, yes. Try to, do the, try to do the right thing and protect the resource area as much as we can, so. How far are they buried, Tim? I, 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 I was definitely not there. I don't know that answer. I can only show you what's there now. Um, so, my opinion is you brought them in, take them out. I'll pass that along. Thank you. I, j I just wanted to bring it up and ask. Nope, uh, fine. So, um, Kevin Newton, make a note to remind me tomorrow to send the copy of Josh's schematic to to the commission. If the commission has any comments on that, Maury, what do you think about planting those cedars? those seven gallons on that slope. Do we know what the, um, uh, the count was of what they removed? No. Okay. I mean, I well, Josh, did you figure that out from the, we have like some of the trees that were on Holmes McGrath surveyed plans, but I mean, they, not all of them were, there were a lot of locusts on there and there were a lot of little saplings that were removed too. So the total caliper inches we can guess, but it's not gonna be accurate. You know how I feel. I mean, disturbing digging big holes in a coastal bank um, is not that great of an idea for the resource. So I'd rather see a lot more small ones than, you know, several, you know, the larger ones. Seven gallon is not that big. Um, as long as they're, they're not like nursery grown, they're native so that they'll live on, again, Buzzards Bay. It's a oh, really tough spot there. And I also, you know, I hope that, you know, they don't come back with a Vista corridor after they get done with their enforcement, um, but they might want to consider that while they're doing the planting. The methodology, you know, how they're, how they're going to get in, because I know a crane brought all the block over, they're probably going to have to bring those two and a half inch or three inch calipers with a crane um, to get them planted along with all the material, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's a, it's a big project. Um, and I heard you say something, Jen, about bearberry. Yeah, so on it, it um, Josh's, hang on, let me find, Josh, you remember when you sent me that email, that email? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I was just suggesting on the slope, uh, the smaller material that will survive would be uh, prudent. Is there any? That's one thing that, Maury, that we're going to work with them on is um i hate this email oh there it is 
legend. So he had um, Panicum, Low Bush Blueberry, Bearberry, Viburnums, the Clethora, um, Bayberry, and High Bush Blueberry over there. Um, and we just wanted to make sure and work with them so that when they said they're going to plant 240, and I explained this to Josh, that you're going to want to kind of know a little bit more about the shrub planting because you don't want to see 200 bearberry out there. And then, you know, a the bearberry, in my estimation, yeah. don't even count as a plant. They're just a ground cover. They're a ground cover. Correct. So mm -hmm. I, I made that very clear. Okay. Um, to, the, to the team, and um, I think they they understood. Um, so, Maury, would you rather see like five gallon cedars out there on that slope, or seven? Because that was my concern, just looking yeah, at it real well, quick. Because I know that's that slope is really steep, really steep, and you know, again, disturbing. The more you know, you've got to dig a hole for them to survive. Um, I don't know. I just feel that a lot more small ones or survivability out there is way better than anything that's over, you know, two to three foot tall is going to get smoked out there. You're not going to burlap them every winter going down that hill. So the little teeny ones will get protection and, you know, they might have an, a, you know, a mortality rate of probably 10 or 20 percent. But if you plant a bunch of little teeny ones, you know, two to three foot or a mm. foot to two foot, I think that the disturbance on the coastal bank is a lot less and their survivability is a lot more. And I know everybody wants everybody to go put, you know, the, take a crane and put a big, huge tree on a coastal bank, but it's, that doesn't help the resource. Um, the, agree. Agree. Uh, 100%. Oh. Agree. Okay. That's all I had. I'm sure this will be an ongoing process. I, I agree in concept a hundred percent. Okay, right. so we'll continue to work. Um, I'll send this off to the board. I'm having trouble doing it right now for some reason. We're going to um, work with them and make some revisions anyway, right? Yeah, make some revisions and then um, the Mr. Chairman, uh, Mike Lavazola is one of the um, people representing Barletta and he would like to speak. So I'm going to promote him up as a panelist. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Hi, um, as uh, Mike loves all, I work for uh, Vincent Barletta. Um, I think what, what Tim was saying, and I know you guys, that is the appropriate, you know, request and decision to have the granite removed. It was put in under, uh, you know, with no permit and, you know, in a buffer and possibly part of the coastal bank. I think, um, and there is quite a bit of granite up there, right? And I think, you know, that is the right uh, decision to remove it. I just, I just wanted to bring up, and I don't know if, the, if, any, of the if any of the people on the commission want to look at it, but the lower pieces of granite that are running perpendicular to the slope are actually retaining the slope and the existing trees um, that, that are there. Um, those are the ones I think that, that would, you know, do some good to preserve the bank and the trees being left, um, but they could be possibly buried. You write the other ones, you know, in the picture, there's a lot of granite up there and and, you know, we appreciate everyone working, you know, with us to help resolve this, you know, uh, situation. But um, I'm not sure how those, how well those trees will survive having, you know, the things moved around again. And those are the ones I think that we are just, from me, just looking, this is my own thing from going out there and seeing, you know, what was done and, and working to try to, you know, we're obviously we're going to put it back to the grade and everything, but those granites are actually holding the slope back. And I believe that's why they were put in. Some of the other ones are more ornamental and, you know, obviously they're not permitted, so they have to be removed. But those are the ones that I think just, um, you know, it would be good to take a look at a consideration of um, if they're removed, you know, just, just what it's going to do to the bank. I mean, whatever your decision is, we are going to do it. But 
that's the uh, the only comment I had for your consideration. Thanks. Mr. Levizol, I'd be happy to meet you and Tim and Josh out there to discuss this, but I can't make a recommendation that when I, I mean, we were out on that site. There was a lot to, to kind of review and go over the day we were out there. If you want to look at something more specific, we'd be happy to go out and look. But at this point, I can't base a recommendation on something I haven't really studied. So I'd be happy to go out there with you and look at it and consider it and talk to you about what my concerns are for either leaving or removing them. Um, and maybe that's the best way forward to discuss the granite. How does that sound? Uh, that sounds excellent. Thank you. Okay. So at this point, Mr. Chairman, uh, the board doesn't have anything, um, any additional comments regarding the plan. I believe I just sent it to all of you. So I apologize. I got it. Um, when was that sent with well, Josh? When we talk Monday or something like that. Um, uh, if the board has any, if you want to look at it and you have any additional comments on it, you can send them to me and I can relay it to um, Josh and Tim. Other than that, I think we should pick a date to continue this too. Um, just to say it, you know, the next for the next hearing, we need to see the plan. Yes. yes. I, I fully agree, uh, Mr. Chairman, and um, we we just kind of wanted to get, I'm not going to call you a blessing, but we just kind of wanted to review the plantings and everything with you. So that, that that's why it was, was done this way. So Completely understand. I'd say if um, in order for me to be able to get out there and meet with them due to my um, uh, not being here for a week, I'd say June 9th. Does that work for you, Tim and Josh? I'm, I'm not around June 9th. Um, and I, I assume you want me to be here, so. Do you want to bump it out to the 16th then? Do the 16th, yeah, if you don't yeah, mind. Sure. I'm, just, I'm just not available June 9th. No, that's fine. No worries. I have to request the applicant. I'll make a motion to continue this to June 16th. Hello, Hawk. All right. We have a motion and a second to continue this until June 16th. Are there any other comments or questions? All right. I'm taking the vote. Betsy? Blackfelder, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Hello, Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Aye. It is unanimous. We've continued this until June 16th. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. And if somebody wants to Thank throw you. out some dates that we can meet out there, that would be great. I'll call you tomorrow, Jen, because I'd rather meet sooner rather than later so that at least Josh and I can get the plan going. Okay. I'll, make, I'll just call I'll make you myself available. Okay. I'll, we'll, we'll do what we can do to try to do it sooner. If, if that okay. works for you. So thank you. Thank you. Not a problem. I'm thinking off the top of my head, I have to do a late site visit on Friday. So I could probably meet you guys before I hit that. And I'm going to that at like 334. So maybe around three o'clock up there. Okay. Something like that. So we can talk tomorrow, Tim. Okay. Thank you very right. much. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, Josh. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank Good you. Night, Tim. Good Thank night. you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Next up, under continued hearings under an enforcement order, Claudia Senedis, 51 Pondview Drive, East Falmouth, Mass. Unpermitted removal of vegetation within conservation jurisdiction. Jim? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm promoting Brian Wall and Paul Muskowski up to... Brian, do you want me to promote the property owner up as well? Um, yes, if you could, Jen, that would be great. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Mr. Wall, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the commission, for the record, my name is Brian Wall. I'm an attorney and I represent the property owner in this matter, Claudia Kennedy. 
and she's on the line with us, as is Paul Miskowski um, from Miskowski Landscaping. Um, this is an enforcement matter, as you know, and at the last hearing, the commission requested that the property owner submit a revised restoration plan after the commission gave us some comments and input as to what it wanted to see. We have indeed submitted a revised plan, and Mr. Miskowski will review that in detail in just a minute. Um, I will give the commission the highlights just briefly. Um, the shed is being moved further from the pond and is now at the edge of jurisdiction, if not out of jurisdiction. The fire pit that was of some concern um, at the last hearing is being moved back from the pond edge to where the shed uh, was located. And additional trees and woody plants have been added to the plan. Um, but before I turn it over to Mr. Mikofsky uh, to review that plan with the commission, I want to inform all of you that our investigation regarding the history of the property and how we came to be in this situation has continued. And uh, and I know it's getting late. I don't, this is not gonna take more than just a couple of minutes, but if, Mr. Chairman, may I share my screen? Yes, sir. Thank you. So these documents were submitted um, electronically and uh, by uh, the old fashioned physical way. So you probably have all of these in your packets. What we did was, um, as many of you probably know, things tend to live on the internet for a long time. And we were able to locate photographs of the land after the previously existing structure was removed um, and before the new structure was built. Basically these come from the listing, the real estate listing of when the property was for sale. And I just want to highlight to the commission, this is the easement that the neighborhood gets the right to use this, this roadway. But if you look to the left, you can see there's no trees in this general area and the vegetation is all relatively new. We suggest that this is where the house was, the driveway to the house and, and the yard that was associated with the house. And here's one further in. And again, you can see in this general area here, the vegetation is all low growing, this is, this is where we think the yard was. And this is now, our back is to the pond. This is the easement. And this is again is the open area where the house and the yard was. This is all new vegetation here. The real estate listing actually had a, a snapshot of the assessing records back when the house was there. And, and here it is right here, dead center in the middle of the lot. And here are just two more photos from the land listing. Again, the point here is to show you that this lot was very much previously disturbed um, before we get to where we are today. Um, moving on, I'd like to show you a comparison. We last time showed you some aerial photographs um, where to, to establish that the lot was previously altered and Claudia Kennedy happens to be a scientist at Woods Hole and she was very helpful. She, what she did was she drew this red square here that shows 1,261 square feet and this blue square here showing 1,908 square feet. This is current existing conditions. The squares are unchanged on the following photographs. It, it, it shows where the house was in the previously disturbed area. And again, here it is here. There is the house and the associated yard that goes with it. Um, the point of this, again, is to show that the area was previously disturbed. One of the issues the last time was we had some information that there was a, an existing conditions plan that we did not know whether or not it was submitted because we were under a different timeline. We've now had time, and I, Jen was kind enough to provide this to me. And what it shows is that this plan kind of unwieldy here, but if you bear with me for a second. And it's kind of where um, the frames, where our, all our faces are, but if you can see right here, the plan was submitted to the commission and it was stamped November 13th, 2018. So that raised some other questions because the plan itself shows rather extensive cutting and with Jen's assistance, um, she put uh, me and, and Jen was on the call too. We talked to Brendan Lynch about what he remembers when he went out to the site. And I did summarize um, the points of our phone call in the letter that I submitted. 
but essentially he said that he recalled a meeting at the property in the fall of 2018 with Clipper Landscaping. And in Brendan's words, when he arrived at the site, he said his jaw dropped when he saw the extent of the cutting. He then recalled another separate meeting a little bit later on December 7th, 2018. And Mr. Lynch says that he told Mr. Parks, the developer, that the cutting was too extensive and that he would have to let it all grow back. And Brendan Lynch said to Mr. Parks that he, that is Brendan, would have to return to the site in the spring for a further inspection. And then we don't really know what happened. I, I asked Mr. Lynch, did he ever return? And he said he did not, and he did not issue any enforcement order or take any pictures at the time. And of course we know thereafter that the property was sold by Mr. Parks, uh, Ms. Kennedy. So I'd like to, if the commission could focus on this photo right here, um, if you keep that in your mind for one minute. We also have found this photo. So Ms. Kennedy was looking for a property to buy in the spring and summer of 2019. And her realtor found out about this particular property, the one we're talking about right now, coming, it was going to come on the market. And so this, she was actually able to go visit and see the property before it officially came on to the market. And she was so happy with what she saw. She took this photograph from the upper window of the backyard. So this is June of 2019, um, before the property went on the market. And you can see it's a little bit dark, but it's important to note the fire pit was already there. All of this cutting and clearing was already there. Some Adirondack chairs were down by the edge of the water. What this shows is that all of the cutting occurred before Ms. Kennedy C purchased the property. You can see some bald spots here. She did bring in some um, wood chips and she thinks that she might have hit this particular sapling uh, when, when the wood chips were being spread. But again, the point here is, is that the cutting was all done before she purchased the property. And this is actually just a side-by-side -side comparison. So this, this photo at the top was taken from the existing conditions plan. Um, Claudia lifted it off the plan and blew it up. And it shows what Mr. Parks put on his plan and submitted to the commission as existing conditions in November of 2018. And this is the picture that Claudia took in June of 2019. And I'm done sharing my screen. Um, so Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, what we would suggest to you is that this, this evidence that we presented tonight and at the last hearing supports the following conclusions. One, it's clear that there was previously a house on the property and associated with that house was a driveway and a yard. And so therefore the existing altered buffer area that you see today on the property appears to be the same as the alterations that were associated with the previously existing house. In, in essence, the, the wide open area was there before. Um, number two, the developer expanded the altered area with cutting and removal of vegetation beyond the scope of the Vista pruning that was approved and installed the fire pit down by the water. This unpermitted cutting and removal was discovered by Brendan Lynch when he conducted the site visits before the occupancy permit issued, um, but for some reason he did not commence enforcement action. We did ask him a little bit about that and he basically said that he was he was being a nice guy and he thought that the developer would do the right thing. Um, but of course we know the develop, developer did not and he sold the property to Claudia um, in spring of 2019 and she inherited this awful situation with the uh, unpermitted cutting in the fire pit. So we, we appeared before you the last time with what we thought was a plan that would provide a buffer to the pond um, but would allow the fire pit to remain and allow um, the property owner to keep the volleyball court. The commission expressed concern that that was not enough and that the commission wanted the fire pit removed. So we have done that, but we are also asking the commission to consider these very extenuating circumstances um, and that the proposed restoration plan that we're submitting, we believe is a fair and equitable outcome because it creates a vegetated buffer adjacent to the pond but takes into account this history and the needs of the property owner uh, to live in the property. 
So having said that, I know that Mr. Miskovsky is on the line. Mr. Chairman, I have the plan that I can put up. So if I may share my screen again. Sure. Let me just get the right one here. So, Paul, if you're on the line, the plan is on the screen. If you could describe to the commission the changes that you've made. Sure. Hi, hey, uh, commission uh, members. Uh, thanks for staying up so late. Uh, my name is Paul Muskovsky. And uh, basically, we we, uh, we refigured the, the existing plan that we had brought before you earlier. We, we eliminated uh, pretty much all of the what you would call non-woodies, uh, except for the golf area, which I think um contrary to some people's belief it, it's an understory plant that would uh it's already on the site there and we're just adding more of it so we we propose uh same set of steps leaving the same area where the fire pit was just to have a place to sit um uh, eliminating all the other pathways that were in the pre the pre-existing plan and uh, bringing in um uh, Sweet fern up on the high side, bringing in Tupelo high bush blueberry, where you see all the bees, uh, where you see the T's are the Tupelos. And then moving the fire pit up to the sort of the, the uh, upper part of where the um, uh, where your delineation is, I think for the 100 foot mark, I think that's what it is. And so essentially it's, it's a very dense planting within those spaces and it allows some flow between the house uh, with the two stairways down into the sitting area and access to the pond, which was uh, was previously there. We don't have to do any clearing. Uh, we, in fact, all the other areas would be uh, um, fairly densely planted and uh, um, would create great uh, a great buffer. A vast improvement over what has been um, overlooked as uh, sort of okay. And Mr. Chairman, I would just add one thing to what Mr. Mikoski said. The regulations do allow for a four foot wide on the ground path. And so what we're looking for is that these stairs are part of that path. And part of the pathing is, is in that sitting area. So there, this path comes down in here. And we're just asking the commission to consider this little extra area here where we would plant maybe some no mow fescue so that the client could have some Adirondack chairs just to sit in the shade. And she made a very important point, um, and you can recall from all the pictures that you've seen, because of the clearing, this area right here is, there's absolutely no shade. And so this is the only area on the property where you could sit in some shade. It's, it's very, very important to her to have that ability. So again, we think this is a fair and equitable result and provides a, a, a vegetated buffer to the pond, which doesn't currently exist. And we'd ask the commission to give its consideration to this plan. Thank you. All right. Jen, do you want to start? Um, the staff doesn't have any additional comments. I mean, we went over the plan with with Brian and you know, this is what they wanted to to present to the commission, so I mean, there was it, it's kind of hard because that, that there was a house there um so you know that that area was void of any trees it was just that understory that was mowed so um and i was on the call with with the former agent and brian and you know he, he brendan really just thought that the developer would do the right thing and call him in the spring and obviously that didn't happen so um here we are. Um, again, we had gotten called. We got involved because we had gotten additional calls on the cutting. Um, so I think the the property owner is is trying to address that. So I've reviewed the plan and it it it's fine in staff size anyway. It's part of what we're looking for anyway, right? Yeah. So I did, Mr. Newton. 
I don't have any, any comment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Maura, did you look at this? What do you think? Yeah, no, I I had no problem. Am I muted? No, oh, no, um, no I, I thought it was a big improvement over the last plan. Good. All right. Anybody have anything they want to throw in there? All right. Anything else from the applicants? No, that, that's it, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we'd All love right. to get an approval and get this thing moving. Well, what will happen, Paul and Brian, and um, is that we will we will issue an enforcement order because that's what this is under. So we'll issue that, and we'll give you you know a couple of benchmark you know dates that you know it has to be planted by this date and monitoring report by this date. So I mean, we'll give you kind of times to that we're gonna to wanna to see the planting. And Paul, we can work with you on the appropriate time to, to start the planting if you want. Um, we can have Kevin, Kevin can work on getting that enforcement out, order out to you fairly soon. Um, so if the board wants to close this and move this plan forward, I would suggest voting the enforcement order and deciding when you wanna see these plants installed by. Paul, how, how's the, um, how, backed up are you getting plant material? Uh, I don't have any problems with anything but the tupelos and I, I'll start searching for them tomorrow. Okay. And, I, and you know, ideally I'd, I'd like to work between seven gallon and 15 gallon depending on what I can find uh, either species or cultivars of, because they're all basically, they, they, some just have better leaf color than others and hold on to their leaves and a little longer so it's uh it's i think it's uh get what i can at this okay. stage and how much time would you need to plant well i i'm really busy if i had what's the day today uh beginning if i had to the middle of june i think that would work for us okay so if we and, gave you a deadline of like june 30th and you can always yeah. if you run into any problems you can always just contact us and we can give you an extension on that. I mean, this is not a, okay. you know, right. we, we understand what's going on out there right now. So yeah, thank you. we'll give you a deadline of the end of June. Um, Kevin, can you get that order out fairly soon? Uh, a couple yeah. of questions. Uh, I, can, I can probably finish it by the end of this week, or early next week. Okay, Terrific. perfect. Thank you. So we get that out to you and you have an installed deadline by the end of June. Great. A um, couple of things, um, additionally, in light of the fact that uh, Claudia may or may not be in town over the course of the summer at points, can we use a temporary drip system that right, would yeah. run off of a hose? Yeah. And so it would go underneath the mulch, you know, professional grade equipment, and uh, and that way it would it would support the uh, vegetation if there if there's somebody away. That's permissible. Yes. Okay. Secondly, um, where are you? Put, don't put the mulch down by the pond. Put you can use the mulch up towards the top, yeah. but I don't want to see the mulch down by the top, down by the pond, Paul. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, right. yeah. And Brian, Brian had talked about using a uh, fescue seed, yeah, which will I'd grow in the shade, anyways. That. Yeah, and so the we'll other thing is, in, we'll write that in that no mulch. I prefer the fescue. That's fine. Um, the other, the other point here is. Uh, what about maintaining sort of a vista height slash corridor for the future? Like, should we talk about this now before, you know, like how, how tall can the high bush blueberry be? Uh, well, we're not going to talk, we're, we can't talk about that until I see a vista corridor on a plan, which I don't have. Okay. So, All right. Um, so if I presented you with. Claudia can always. The op property can always approach the staff under an RDA for a VISTA pruning permit once the vegetation is established. That's fine. Right. But the, the, isn't that kind of a waste of time for everybody? But to say right now, say, okay, you know, we have well, an understanding. I don't have the VISTA corridor on a plan. I can't approve something we don't see on a plan. Well, you have a pre existing VISTA corridor plan that was already accepted before we came to this meeting. And then they went further 
Yeah, you might not have recalled that, Jen. I was just raising my hand that the way this happened was there was a negative determination that allowed the house, and then the developer came back and asked for VISTA pruning and then went beyond what was allowed. So there actually is a negative determination with a view corridor in place. Brian, what was the date of that? Brian? That hasn't expired, I believe, hasn't it already? Got to be close. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, the VISTA pruning... Um, just about to, you know, like it was, was done in 2018. So yeah, it was, 19, 2021, 20, yeah, October, you know, fall 2000, this next so fall. So you have to reapply for those? Yeah. I'm, I'm not that yes. familiar with this game. Yeah, so. it's actually, the, there was a staff report issued July 18th, 2018. And I don't actually have the uh, date, but it looks like it was probably July or August of 2018. So there's actually a few months left available on that. In fact, and then the, you would have to just reapply. Yeah. And in fact, due to the COVID orders, it's it's probably good into the fall. But we could we could we could talk about that you know, out in the field, Jen. We can, but I can't approve anything that I don't see on like for Paul to ask us to approve a Vista corridor not shown on his plan. Right. We okay. just can't do that. Right. So Fair I would enough. suggest just coming back to us under an RDA process to do the Vista pruning. Okay. Okay. Good enough. Thanks for your time, everybody. Thank you. Um, yeah. Just to state the obvious, though, that uh, maybe you guys should all coordinate this future VISTA so that uh, you're not planting something you're going to be cutting work around later. Right. Right. Good point. All right. So we're looking for, we want to vote for an enforcement order, correct? Jim? Like, yep. You're going to vote to issue an enforcement order. Um, and have the area restored in accordance with the, the plan that was just shown to you. Paul, can you put a date on that plan for me? Is sure. it on there already? Uh, maybe, it may be. Uh, it was probably a, two months ago at this point, but uh, I'd be happy to do that. I can do that yeah. tomorrow. Um, let's see. With a planting date of by the end of June. Yeah, planting date by the end of June, no mulch. Sure. Temporary above ground uh, drip irrigation line. drip system yes. to keep the plants alive. And we'll have you do monitoring reports for um, probably the next year. The, like, probably how many? We usually do like three years worth of monitoring reports. Yes. So we'll do that. Okay. Yeah. And as, as far as the mulch is concerned, that was, that was down by the water that you specified. So like, the, let's say the shady, where the shade starts, the, the, the mulch stops. So in other words, it, where, correct, the, where correct, the overhead. Correct. Yeah, I see what you're yeah. saying, Paul. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I don't have Fair a enough. problem with the mulch up by the thing, uh, up by the house where those plantings are, but I don't want to see it down um, where the stones are. Um, Below it. Forward, no mulch. Fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll make, I'll make a motion to issue an enforcement order. The plants have to be in by June 30th. There can be uh, temporary watering. Uh, there can be mulch, but limited mulch. Is there anything else? And and the, there'll, there'll be um, uh, monitoring for the next three years. Uh -huh. Bird, second that. All right. If there's nothing further, I'm going to take the vote. All right. Again, we have a motion and a second to an issue this enforcement order. Betsy? Gladfelder, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Carla Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Bad night. It is unanimous. We have issued an enforcement order. Thank you, everyone. One favor and submit a large scale plan to me, please. Sure, Jen. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank I'll you, David, as well. For uh, working Thank through you. a tough one. We, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Likewise. Jen, Thank you. Thank you all for site visits, Jen.
All right. Okay. Next up, vote orders of conditions. First up, Stephen J. and Lorraine Barillaro, 36C, Alder Lane, North Falmouth, Mass. So I can give the quorum, but I think if Maury wants to leave, she could leave unless we have any other announcements. Just that we don't have a meeting next week. It's the reward for missing oh, the meeting. Go so early. <laughs> oh, God, am I so disappointed. Thank you, Betsy. I'm, I'm dismissed. Well, no, Jamie has to dismiss you. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm just playing that out. <laughs> She's your advocate. Nobody's ever asked me before. <laughs> you are dismissed if you so choose. Thank you for attending Thank tonight. You. Thank you, Thanks sir. for your input. Good night, Maury. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night, Maury. Good night, Maury. Bye-bye. And Susan, the rest of us who are left, who's Courtney, Kevin, Betsy, Jamie, Steve, Peter, and Pat, are on the next two quorums. No, no, that's not right. Are on this quorum. I'll tell you the next quorum when we get to it. Courtney, you're hiding. Why is that? Um, I've got problems with the video on my. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm high. I can't see anything except my screen. All I right. can hear you all though. All right. I don't really believe you, but I'll, I'll let it go. <laughs> all right. 36 C Alder Lane. This is an addition in a, in a, uh, detached garage. We got a revised plan. We got all kinds of stuff that we were asking for. Jen. Yeah, we have the two trees that he's going to put back, I think, right? Yeah. Yep. So, he's got the mitigation in there, and then proposed eight foot east, proposed eight foot eastern red cedars. He's got three of them. So this is a proposed addition, a proposed detached garage, a proposed front porch, and then a bunch of mitigation planting. And I think the only thing, and I don't know if he put it on his plan, was that we said they may want to do a root barrier um, between the Phragmites and the right. mitigation. But, I mean. You can condition that. Yeah, Matt pretty much and like worked with the staff and we just kind of buttoned everything up. So I think the only outstanding thing was the the installation of a root barrier. Okay. Root barrier. So I'll make a motion to accept as discussed. Gladfelter. Third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept the order conditions. As discussed, does anybody have anything else you want to see in there? All right. Betsy. Gladfelder, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. Next up, Cindy Coates, trustee, the 187 Penzance Road Trust, 187 Penzance Road, Woods Hole, Mass. This is that little project at the end. So the quorum is Courtney, Kevin, Jamie, Steve, and Peter. That's it. Nope, Pat and I are not on it. All right. Okay, so this is mostly a um, kind of restoration. They're installing mitigation from a previously Require, previously approved and requ uh, required mitigation for a previous permit, um, doing some work on the, the workshop area, 
They have put a line of plants along the top of that coastal bank um, where the original plants were required to be, but they did leave a, a gap um, that they're requesting. And then the creation of the path. Um, Through, through the property and down by the little pond and then a path close to the property line on the other side with, again, more restoration plants um, over to that end. So um, I think that pretty much sums it up. The staff has, you know, worked with them. Um, we first question the use of the, the huckleberry sod, but, you know, we've agreed to allow the huckleberry sod on this site and then the site um, at 24 Willis to kind of see how it does in these types of environments before we want to see more the use of this type of product throughout town. So we just kind of are using these as a uh, two test cases in that in that respect. Um, the boardwalk was removed. Um, there was discussion last week about um, the lighting. So I believe, you know, some of the comments from the abutting property owner's representative be that they not be more than 12 to 18 inches off the ground, that they be paced 25 feet apart and they be fully shielded lights or aimed downward. Downward. Yeah. Um, and low, volt low voltage light. And we were told that, that that low voltage doesn't require a ditch witch or anything. They can just. It's how do they say shallow. Kind of, yeah, shallow little trench along that path. Um, and I think that is about it. Um, you say about something about abandoning the um, path along the beach. Oh yeah, and they're going to abandon the path on the. Let me get it correct. They're going to abandon the path that I tripped over like three times on the kind of south side of the pond. Mm -hmm. There's like kind of a worn path down to that like beach grass area. They're going to abandon that and let that grow in and then propose that. Did they say they were gonna plant that or let it grow in? Just let it grow in, I thought. Let it grow in. Um, and then they're uh, putting another path on the north side of the pond. Right. quite sure why, but that's where we're putting it. So, and Roots. that's it. What was the quorum again? The quorum is Courtney, Kevin, Jamie, Steve, Peter. Okay, gentlemen. So on the, uh, I think it's the southeast side, the, the mitigation plantings, that would have a single rail fence, all the normal stuff. Um, if that's what you would like, we can do that. Um, the mitigation plants, on, I don't really think we need that fencing where the restoration plants are over by the pond side. I think that's pretty, it's not like they're going to be taking a mower Protected. down there anyway. Right. Um, but I would say... Um, on the main, on the, on the, on the, like the main part of the property where we did have all the, on the south side of that peninsula, you want a single rail fence. Okay. I don't want to see it mowed. Okay. Um, let's see what else I have for notes. Oh. Uh. The workshops being hooked up to the existing. Mm -hmm. uh, the compass rose was addressed. Uh, 
The path is going to be four feet, not six feet, correct? Correct. Uh, um, right, those are all the notes. And then all the plant material, and there's no amphibious landing craft being used. All the plant material for the pond area is going to be brought into that area either by hand or probably on like a little gator thing they're not going to be using the lull or no lull no that thing was huge i, I honestly I, I think they got the, the trees to get it in there i think they got the terminology wrong i mean i'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt because a lull for that purpose is absolutely wrong i mean you know i didn't know what one was until they put the picture up on like <sighs> yeah no, no way. All right. And then uh, plants brought in by hand. Okay. All right. Anybody have anything else that we haven't already discussed? No. I see some nodding. All right. What's your pleasure? Come on, on anybody. Do Don't do be it. shy. Make a motion to uh, issue an order of conditions as discussed. Heard. Second. Second. Wow, that was close. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept, to issue an order of conditions as discussed. There's nothing further. All right. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter? Paul Shine. Steve? That and I. That, that is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. That was kind of anticlimactical for the amount of continuances that I had. <laughs> you know? Size I mean, package. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man. All right. So again, um, we don't have a we don't meet next week, so you got a night off. Thank you, everyone. So yeah. out of the darkness, I will move to adjourn. And <laughs> <laughs> second. All right. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Betsy. I felt her eye. Man. Courtney. Bird, I. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Pat. Harris, I. Peter. <clears throat> Walsh, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Justin. You can stop recording. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. I'm not Thank you.